we are here for the FRO 112th Euros 2024 uh, in Messina. It's the northeast coast of Sicily. I'd like to thank our event sponsors, Tony Sports, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing for helping us to bring you this coverage. Uh, so like we said, we've just seen the tail end of um, free practice two. Uh, going into controlled practice now. Uh, so we've got one round of controlled practice. Then we have a, a lunch break coming up. Then another round of controlled practice. A uh, bit of a reseed whilst the opening ceremony goes on. And we'll be in then to the final or the first round of qualifying, which is our final round of track action for the day. Uh, as you can see there on screen, uh, Jan Rathaisky looking very quick in modified uh, or the six and a half turn blinky class. Uh, over three laps uh, and Jan's car looking uh, probably the safest you can see uh, down towards the end of the main straight a little bit bumpy there his car looks the best coming in off the end of the main straight uh, as as far as we can see so uh, looking uh, pretty decent there for Jan just about to see heat number one of the stock class going out there first of five heats so welcome to you if you are just joining us um, if you've found it for the first time, um, you can uh, see all of the RCTV action, uh, whether it's on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, or Facebook. Cars just starting to get themselves sorted out on the track, out on the circuit. Other action going on on RCTV this weekend as well. Um, we're going to see the H2GP coverage going on later today. That's the uh, hydrogen-powered RC action. That's uh, coming from California. So pretty cool. So uh, all the RCTV merch on show all around the world this weekend. So, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty it's fairly warm here anyway, isn't it? Not. <laughs> Drivers getting set to be released out onto the circuit. Then Werner Spanbrucker, Christian Geyer, Lucas Niederer, Michael Laws, Tim Panzers, Lucas Larson, uh, Antonio de Guaco. Gianfranco Di Giovanni and Alex D'Angelo. couple of cameras around the circuit this weekend so we've got the uh, yeah the, the the moving camera on a, a platform that's uh, probably gonna elevate any any moment now uh, the car circulating at the moment just on um, warm-up laps
Yep, that's uh, over to the right-hand side of the driver's rostrum. So you've got a very quick um, sort of right-left flick. Uh, Anti-clockwise circuit here this weekend. Cars look like they are away and counting. The, the platform is, is lifting. Just getting ourselves <coughs> in position so that we can see what's going on. Looks like Werner Spanbrucker out into an early lead from Michael Law. So it's car number one from car number four. try and pick up car number one as they come past you can see <laughs> yeah I think just about to come out onto the main straight I believe that is car one he's certainly moving uh, fairly rapidly compared to most here we go so this is Werner Spanbrucker our leader just uh, hops a little bit over the chicane there so pushing slightly wide on corner exit, but down the end of the main straight, turns in quite nicely. It's a little bit bumpy down there, but he's managing to carve his way through the traffic pretty well. Who else have we got out there going quite fast? Uh, we've got Michael Laws. Looks like he's doing pretty well out there. He is the sort of golf liveried car. He's just on the main straight now. So the uh, kind of sky blue and orange colored car. There we go. That was... Uh, a couple of cars ahead of us in shot. So just watching them come through now. And Werner is closing in on the rear of him. So let's just run with Michael for a couple of laps. He just flicks it through that chicane. This is the third time he's been out on track this weekend. As Werner closes in on him. So, yeah, we are in, uh, this is like seeding practice now, effectively. So we've, we've had two rounds of free practice. Um, let everybody get their eye in. Uh, we've now got seeding practice. So after these two next two rounds, uh, we're going to have a resort going into the last round of the day, which will be the first round of qualifying. Uh, so uh, people will be uh, going home tonight, sort of knowing, um, no, knowing roughly where they are in the pecking order and how things are playing out. Starting to play out. We're still running with uh, Werner Spanbrucker at the minute. The yellow and white coloured car uh, looked pretty decent all the way through practice. It's off the end of the main straight is proving to be um, the, the biggest challenge. Certainly over eight minutes um, seems to be the, the biggest difficulty keeping hold of, of traction later on in the run. Um, really easy to ask too much of your tyres uh, sort of later on um, in the course of the, the run, uh, start running out of rear traction. Werner looking pretty good. Lucas Larson with the six car is running in second position at the moment. Let's see if we can spot Lucas. Just having a, a look for the six car. While we're looking for him, we'd like to say hello to Tony Sport. Tony Sport uh, watching us on uh, the RC Racing TV YouTube. So thank you very much, Tony Sport, everyone at Tony Sport. Tony himself, Uwe, Mark, of course, um, Patrick, and everybody there who's uh, been such a great help for us with the uh, ETS coverage. But uh, Tony, our title sponsorship, uh, Tony Sport is our title sponsor for the weekend. So we want to thank them again for uh, helping us bring you this coverage live from Sicily. And we also have Dave Spashett uh, from Zen Racing, Mr. Zen Racing himself, the Zen Master, uh, watching live. So thank you very much, Dave, for chiming in, saying hello. So I hope everything is uh, as sunny as it is here uh, in Sicily. But I, I 
don't think it will be. <laughs> uh, probably not, no. Uh, Shorts and t-shirt weather here <laughs> already. So. Yeah, obviously Eastbourne, that's where we were last year for the yeah. uh, th for th this meeting last year. Um, looking for Lucas Larson. He is the all blue colored car. He's just coming out onto the main straight now. So uh, that is the is. second place car. That, uh, if we can run with him for a little bit. Uh, there is a car out there that's um, circulating. It's a, a slightly ill-advised color, really, for, uh, <laughs> for racing on carpet. It's a sort of graphite -y gray, perfectly camouflaged <laughs> car. That, um, the is. only way it could be a worse color is if it was just a darker gray. <laughs> I don't know. At, at least he's running white wheels. <laughs> I mean, bl black wheels would just um, probably finish us off. Yeah. I, he's, um, maybe he's racing on hard mode. Uh, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> it kind of looks like one of the ghost cars he hasn't unlocked it yet. It's, <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's unlockable AI out there. I can't even see the number on it. He might not be running a number. Maybe it's like fully hidden. It's like no bright, no bright stickers at all. Not very bright at all. <laughs> it uh, certainly doesn't help matters, but uh, we're watching Lucas Larson at the moment. He's catching up to the back of Michael Laws. Michael uh, gets out of the way of him quite nicely. Let's just watch down here off the end of the straight. Rides over those few bumps fairly nicely. Cuts back underneath uh, some traffic through the chicane. What Oli Botnick saying hello and good luck, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming to the Automatics team. <laughs> uh, quite, a, quite a large number of them here. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, there's a, uh, a decent chunk of them. They'll be uh, appearing later. The, um, the, the top heat of stock is fairly well populated with, um, with, with them. Um, so looking pretty decent uh, for those guys. So yeah, no doubt Ollie will be keeping keeping an eye out on that. And uh, obviously Chris Bultink is uh, about here as well. Yeah, so floating about making him. himself very very well known to the racers. He, well, he's he's at all of these meetings, isn't he? As well as the touring car. Yes, absolutely. So uh, and we'll be at I believe his home track um, later in the year. Uh, you and me both, actually, James. Uh, <laughs> oh, at the uh, touring car year, right? Yeah. Uh, is that Russell Air? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah. in Belgium. Yes. So uh, looking forward to some waffles and some beer uh, and what else? <laughs> There's plenty of waffling going on this weekend already, Frank. Yes, that's, yes uh, for sure. Uh, uh, Jonah Watkins is asking, fastest three laps, question mark. So I yes. believe that it, for these for this next, uh, what, two heats, two rounds? Yes. So the uh, running order that you're seeing um, might look a little bit funky. You can see the sort of 34-5. Um, 34.9. Yeah, that's the total of the three laps, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's three consecutive laps. Um, so you, this, this doesn't necessarily reflect the running order over eight minutes, although the guys that are quick over three laps uh, are also fairly quick over eight minutes as well. Ollie Bolting says he's actually at the track at the moment. So <laughs> that's uh, pretty good to see. Make sure it's nicely stocked with some, uh, as we said, waffles and beer. Cars just being called to the finish. Oh, All this heat and uh, an airborne moment. That uh, was that grey car. He actually cut the track. Well, cut the track backwards. If you're going to cut the track, cut it forwards at least. Jump it the right way. Werner <laughs> yeah. Spanbrucker taking that one over three laps then. He'll be looking to seed himself up into a higher heat later on. So we've got five heats of the stock class. Uh, we've also then got a couple of heats of the uh, LC Racing uh, 114th support class running out on the track. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It's, um, so for those of you curious about that, it's basically just a, a local uh, import brand, I believe. Um, just kind of help add some numbers to the, to the, to the racers here. And uh, it's four-wheel drive touring car, four, 14th scale. Uh, just running literally out of the box as a, just sort of a little fun class. So there's uh, a few racers signed up for that. Yeah, a um, few juniors in there as well. Yeah, Martin Hoodie's son, I don't know, is, is it Max? Philip. Philip? Philip. Oh, yes, yes. Um, he's, um, yeah. I just assume everyone's kid nowadays is named Max. <laughs> it's like a few years ago, everyone was named Jensen. Uh, but yes, so yeah, there's. Uh, we won't be... Don't worry. We're, I mean, don't worry. <laughs> we won't be following that 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 
class on track. We'll kind of take a little break for that, um, but we will uh, show the racing action at least so you can follow along. But uh, we'll use that to uh, opportunity to go talk to some racers and find out the stories uh, between the mod and the, uh, the spec heats. No second heat of spec about to go. Uh, who have we got? We've got uh, Ole Brin, Marcus Andreasen, Tom Adams, Jan Dietmar, Freddie Parker, Alessandro Calarese, Mario Neri, Tim Janssen, and Alexander Anderson. So uh, Anderson and Andreasen in this one. So that will good luck, James. Uh, that will keep us <laughs> occupied, keep us nice and busy. Cars having been cooled off already. We've got the green and white car of uh, Thomas Ole Brin. Timing hasn't started yet by the looks of things, so they're going to be just no, doing a few just warm started, yeah, just started so, now. Oh, yeah, okay, they've been uh, tracked down now. Here we go. So Anderson from Andreasen uh, out in front. Give it a couple of laps to settle down. So it's the number two car that is leading. Uh, I believe he's one of the green and white cars. Oh, Let's just have a look on the main straight. No, no, it's dead. See that. The n number is for Marshall. <laughs> Just had to tell a elderly Italian gentleman that uh, he can't sit next to us because it's a seat for a Marshall. So. Ah, yes, they'll be uh, <laughs> occupied later. So looking for the nine car, so that's the pink and white car at the moment, is the leader. Let's just have a look. Uh, he is just about to come out onto the main straight now. So we go backs it in off the end of the main straight. Alexander Anderson, our leader, he's closing in on some traffic. Uh, it's the number four car of Jan Dietmar that he's closing in on. Past a prone car lying on its roof in the chicane. People starting to get their cars a little bit more dialed in, traction building, um, as you'd expect over the course of the weekend. Uh, traction's just going to get higher and higher and higher. So traction building nicely, control additive this weekend. So spider blue additive, as supplied by one of the event sponsors, Zen Racing. So just to answer questions, I suppose, um, of, of viewers who are maybe viewing and uh, watching and, and not particularly uh, up, to, up to speed on exactly everything that... There's, uh, it's open tires, right? It, yeah, so it is racers, open tires. Racers bring their own supply of tires. Yep. Um, uh, however, the, I believe it's the organizers or the rules uh, require a, a, a certain additive because of the carpet for the local track. Uh, it's the, the organizers have specified an additive. Right. And uh, so there's a, there's a, a tire truing area, a tire uh, uh, additive area, tire cleaning area. So it's all kind of rigidly sort of specified. You can't clean your tires on the track like you would at a club event maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's... Uh, and uh, got a car on its Marshall. roof. The um, car that we were following, car nine of uh, Alexander Anderson. I mean, he's already pumped in three quick consecutive laps. So not going to hurt him too much. Let's see if we can find Freddie Parker. He is the uh, sort of white and uh, kind of uh, limey green colored car off the end of Main Straight now. There we oh. go. This is Freddie's car. 
Freddie, uh, younger brother of Lewis Parker, will be out on circuit later. Have a look, little bit of a hop over the kerb there for Freddie, but uh, Freddie, an up-and-coming racer. Got the whole Parker clan was on our flight, I believe, weren't they? Uh, they were, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the whole, uh, whole Parker crew uh, on the same flight as us and arrived at the same time as us yesterday. Freddie being nice and sensible out there. Just uh, keeping the car in the middle of the circuit. We have uh, Simone Bonucci in the chat, shouting and saying, Marco Mazzini, the best Efra 112th mod. So uh, not quite out on the track just yet, but yes, we have an advanced cheerleader crew already for Signore Mazzini. Marco so. will be out on track later. We see, uh, <laughs> just see Freddie get uh, a little bit of assistance to be shoveled off the circuit there. We will, um, th this will become uh, uh, probably a little more structured later when uh, qualifying proper starts and we're running for a, a time over eight minutes rather than just uh, three consecutive laps. But uh, welcome to you if you are just joining us here on RCTV for the EFRA 112th Euros, whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube. Remember to subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Facebook. Uh, make sure you join the group. Uh, you can... That's the RC Racing TV uh, Facebook group. We are trying to build that back up. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, search for it on Facebook and join it if you're into doing Facebook groups, basically. And uh, <laughs> later on, there's also on the, the YouTube channel, um, during the, the break, you can jump across and watch some of the uh, RC Autopsy uh, videos that, uh, yeah. that have been, been posted, including some of this very class, actually. Yeah, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got uh, Reinhardt's car in there from the Worlds. Um, we show a tiny bit of Orlowski's car that he won last year's Worlds with, and uh, Andy Murray, uh, who's in a couple of those videos, was actually in, uh, uh, he's actually here to, uh, this weekend, and uh, we were hoping to have him on chat uh, sometime during the weekend. Today's a bit busy for him. I've already had a little uh, uh, poke at him. But, um, yeah, we'll be we'll be talking to him for a little bit. Obviously, he's one of our many event sponsors, which we're very happy to chat with on air. Absolutely. Marcus Andreas is still leading this one then from Alexander Anderson, uh, Jan Dietmar. Just over a minute left. Let's... Uh, run to home with Freddy. Gets out of the way of some traffic quite nicely. It's got Roger Surfing from the, the Bay Area, Northern California, saying hello. Man, you are way, way behind us. <laughs> Nine hours behind us, and uh, we know that off the top of our head because, uh, like we said earlier, the other half of the RCTV crew is over there uh, in Orange County. Uh, doing the H2GP, uh, high school level sort of STEM educational uh, uh, California state finals for hydrogen powered RC cars. Quite cool. So check that out over the weekend. Um, in between, you know, when for, from our perspective, when you're when we've got a little break on. <laughs> but if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's, uh, it is pretty cool. Yep. A few, uh, few little breaks inserted into the schedule over the course of the weekend. Car's just coming up towards the finish now. We've got the final 10 seconds. And if you are just seeing this on either Facebook or YouTube and wondering what's going on, this is the EFRA 112 European Championships uh, being brought to you from Messina, uh, northeast coast of Sicily. This is the uh, Paradise RC Arena. Fantastic venue that they've got here. And uh, if you want to find out more about any form of, of RC racing, then uh, check out the EFRA website, which is EFRA.WS. Uh, you should be able to find out uh, anything about your local federation and get you somewhere near to getting yourself out on track, whether it's uh, either this class, the 112th scale, or whether there's any other kind of class that uh, you might fancy having a go at. Plenty of action going on. There we go. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell. Get notified when there is more track action going on. Who have we got coming out next then? 
on track. We've got heat number three about to head out. Just waiting for the timing to update. You can see uh, everybody kind of wanting to get themselves down on the far right-hand side of the driver's rostrum. Uh, reason being, I think, the uh, that chicane that you can see in the over on the right-hand side of your, your screen, um, just in front of that sort of pointy white barrier, uh, it gives you a, a bit of a better line there. Rostrum's quite tall, very close to uh, underneath the circuit. Uh, so Chase Mackman asking, how many heats have we got today? Uh, we've got five heats of stock. Uh, we've got two heats of the uh, LC Racing class, uh, and then we've got three heats of modified, so 10 heats in total. Uh, all of the 112 heats are eight minute long, uh, and we then have a uh, two five minute heats. So uh, Alex Saiter, uh, uh, Francesco Salva, Marco Pansera, Andy Thompson, Nigel Bowen, Torsten Muller, Dan Bancroft, Mark Payne, and Gianluca Lino are drivers for this heat. Cars released out onto the circuit. Marco Pansera into an early lead. He is the three car. I think he's one of the white and green cars. There's uh, several white and green out there. I think he's the one just coming out onto the main straight now. And uh, wheelies it into the barrier. Let's just see if we can pick up Marco. So he's... So he's just off the end of the main straight now, coming up past race control under the driver's rostrum. Here we go. This is our number three car, Marco Pansera. Dan Bancroft currently running in second position. Um, Dan being quite brave with his choice of body shell as well um, that he's running. He's running a fairly aggressive body shell. A um, lot of steering, very little downforce. Uh, make him fast in a straight line. Uh, maybe quick over three laps, but um, over over eight minutes, quite a, a brave choice. Bit of curb hopping going on from Marco. Let's see if we can pick up Daniel, actually. He is the all-white coloured car. He is just heading out through the section out onto the main straight now, so we've got him. As he follows down, you can see a wide line there off the end of the main straight, uh, struggling a little bit over some of those bumps. So just nicely around the middle of the circuit for Dan. A little bit of push on exit of a few of the corners. Looks like he's struggling to commit a little bit. Car wanting to, to wash out slightly. Andy Thompson running in third position. He is the number four car. Uh, I think he is the... Uh, believe he was one of the yellow cars, but... Maybe not. No, he is the sort of all green, like minty green coloured car. Let's just have a look. He is the last of the green cars on the main straight now. Let's just see if we can pick Andy up, run with Andy for a little bit. Starting to carve his way through some traffic. Looks like a little bit of double steering going on for, for Andy. Car looking a little bit pointy. Rhythm so, so important with these 112 scale cars. But starting to navigate his way through some traffic. Getting caught out a little bit behind that other car that he's following there. Dan Bancroft hits the front then over three laps. 
Let's have a look, see who else. Alex Seiter is running in third position now with the number one car. Let's see if we can pick him up. Alex is uh, just looking for the one. Alex is another green and white car. He is just heading round through out onto the main straight now. There we go. This is Alex Seiter, our third position car. A right. little bit of a track marker um, getting pulled up there. Just spotted the marshal out on the track recovering that. Dan Bancroft then from Nigel Bowen's got himself up into second position. So number five car of Nigel Bowen. Let's see if we can spot him. He is the fluoro yellow coloured car. He's just heading out towards the main straight now. So this is our second place man, Nigel Bowen. The Nigel running in towards some traffic. Closing in on. So look, one of them gets out of his way quite conveniently. In fact, I think that was Mark Payne that uh, just binned it out of the way in front of him. Nigel going quite nicely. Mark Payne applying some pressure behind him. That worked quite nicely for Nigel. Just a little bit of a coming together between two of the cars in front of him. Spotted the gap, went for it. Just closing in on car, blue and white car directly in front of him. This heat number three of five of the spec class. Again, welcome to you if you are just joining us here on RCTV, bringing you the EFRA 112th Euros. Joining us during controlled practice. So looking for type best time over three consecutive laps rather than time over eight minutes. Uh, that's why the order looks a little bit jumbled up compared to what you might be seeing on track at the moment. Have a look. Who else haven't we seen? I think we've covered. Uh, have we not picked up car three? Marco Pansera. Let's see if we can find him. Trying to identify the cars as they come past. They will become uh, a little bit easier to spot. In fact, let's pick up the sort of whitey, orangey coloured car as he comes onto the main straight now. Let's see who that is as he comes past. That is the number two car of Francesco Salva. Let's run with Francesco for a little bit. Try and give a little bit of uh, track action, a little bit of opportunity for everybody or as much as we can during practice. As it becomes a bit more focused later on during qualifying, we'll get a better idea of what's going on out on the circuit. So these uh, LMP12, uh, 112 scale cars, uh, Le Mans prototype style body shells. This is the 13.5 Blinky class. So 13 and a half turn motors, uh, speed controllers with a prescribed uh, output from them uh, through the sensor cable into the motor. So it should be very, very close on performance between all of these cars. Just coming up towards the end of this heat number three of five. So it's starting to get towards the pointy end now. And uh, some of the guys in this next heat um, looking to get themselves into the top ten over the course of the weekend. 
Dan Bancroft takes that from Nigel Bowen. You can see uh, over three laps, very, very close between those two, actually. It's like three one-hundredths of a second um, over three laps. So absolutely nothing in that one. Again, thank you to our event sponsors. Tony Sport, uh, the main sponsor for bringing us here. Uh, also Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing. Coming up next then, we've got Jody Sherratt, Stuart Cartwright, Simon Lauter, Finley Whitelock, Stefan Schultz, Andreas Brin, Mark Jordan, Stefan Hoyce, and Niels de Greiser. Simon Lauter, uh, current stock touring car champion for Europe, won that title uh, last year in Germany. So Simon posting top 10 uh, times in practice sessions. Uh, not Simon's normal class, but uh, fancy to go at it. And his uh, sponsor, Awesomatics, got um, some new bits available um, to have a look at. Maybe more on that uh, later on. So up and running. Got some quick cars out on the circuit. Have a look early on. Uh, so Simon is running the sort of light orange colored car. He's currently quickest here we go that's Simon's car on screen let's watch him for a little bit Stefan Schultz also going quite quickly at the moment let's run with Simon for a couple of laps you can see he turns in nicely off the end of the main straight not too unsettled over those bumps he is closing in on a white and green coloured car I think that's Niels de Greiser that uh, he is heading towards the back of. And passing Jody Schechter, who was pointing backwards. Finley Whitelock's hit the front. He is uh, the brighter of the two orange coloured cars, so he's just entering the main straight now. Let's see if we can move back a few cars. Pick up Finley. Finley Whitelock leading this one then from Stefan Schultz. Mark Jordan in third position currently. A minute and a half into the run. So Finley makes a small mistake, just backs out the way of traffic. Again, over three consecutive laps, you can afford to do that. Let's have a look at uh, Stefan Schultz. He's going quite well. He is the white and blue colored car. He's just about to enter the main straight now. The uh, Andy Murray just doing a little bit of track repair there. Uh, Simon Lout has got himself up into second position over three laps now. We're still running with the car of Stefan Schultz off the end of the main straight. You can see uh, really difficult over those bumps to get the car to, to turn in. Uh, you can see the nine car of Niels de Greiser. Um, Taking the track marker for a bit of a Burton again in the middle of the chicane. So a little bit of uh, track marker being rescued out of the way. Let's have a look, see if we can find uh, with Mark Jordan. He is the seven car. Uh, believe Mark's car is the 
yellow front green rear car. He is just coming down uh, under the driver's rostrum. He's heading out towards the main straight. He's directly behind Stefan's car. There we go. So let's run with Mark for a little bit. So you can see Stefan making his way through traffic just out of the front of shot. This is uh, Jody Schechter. Jody Schechter, Jody Scherer. Uh, that um, we've got Mark Jordan coming up to pass. And Simon Lauter closing on the pair of them. So Mark gets out of Simon's way. So, so, so difficult to get a car that you're confident you can lean on the rear. In fact, Simon Lauter now to the front over three laps. Uh, he is very, very close with Finley Whitelock. Um, they're both doing, they've both done like a 33, effectively a 33 3. Uh, we've got a, a 33 2.5 and, and a 33 2.9. So very, very close. Less than a, a tenth in it a lap. Stefan Schultz a couple of tenths further back. Mark Jordan, who we're running with at the minute, he's done a 33.8, as has Stu Cartwright. Uh, let's see if we can find Stu Cartwright. He is a all yellow coloured car. Uh, his is car number two. So he's the one just heading out towards the main straight now. Let's run with Stu's car for a little bit. Uh, a little bit Larry there over the curbs. So nice and calm, nice and controlled. Just keep the car flowing round. You can see a little bit hesitant to turn in there off the end of the main straight. Uh, again, those bumps uh, wanting to unsettle the car. And that's what happens if you crank it in too hard. You end up going in backwards. So two and a bit minutes left. Let's uh, move back one car to the orange coloured car. This is Simon Lauter. So Simon is now out in front. You see, come past Jody Sherratt. So Jody uh, having to pull over, get out of the way of uh, a bunch of people. So a nice run coming together for Simon. Um, be interesting to see how he gets on this weekend. Like we said earlier, not his usual class, but uh, he's obviously a very, very quick driver. Um, if he gets a, a good car underneath him, expect him to fly. Finley Whitelock running in second position. Stefan Schultz running in third currently over three laps. Again, welcome to you if you are just joining us. This is heat number four of five of the spec class. Uh, this control practice one. Uh, already had a, a couple of free practices earlier on. So after control practice, uh, we're going to, or after CP1, uh, there'll be a bit of a lunch break going on. Uh, then we are into CP2. Uh, and then it's going to be a bit of a break in for a resort and the opening ceremony. And we'll then hit the first round of qualifying, which will be our last track action of the day. Uh, welcome to you if you are just joining us here on RC Racing TV. We are bringing you coverage of the EFRA 112 Euros from Messina. Uh, in northeast Sicily. This is uh, Paradise RC Arena. Uh, again, if uh, you're interested in this, if it's the first time you've seen any of this going on, um, check out the EFRA website, EFRA.WS. Uh, you can see anything that might be going on uh, out on track where your local racing is going to be. And again, thank you to the event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing for helping us to bring you this coverage.
Time's just finished. Simon Lauter taking that one over three laps just from Finley Whitelock. Those two um, got about a tenth a lap in hand over Stefan Schultz. Uh, and Mark Jordan um, about another tenth back um, as well over, over three laps. Getting set for the top heat of spec then. Um, so Ollie Payne currently looking fastest over three laps. He's ready to show the pain. In uh, three laps, got uh, Max Mackler heading up onto the rostrum. Mad Max. Mad Max, uh, world champion. Uh, won yes. This, uh, won this, th this class um, from uh, Mark Styles. He's just heading up there and uh, standing Stylesies. next to him. Styles Standing next to him. I'm uh, just, I'm uh, just, you, you say the name and I'll come up with some sort of uh, uh, nickname on, on the bounce. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, we've got Christian <laughs> Donath up there. We've got... Uh, we've, we've Christian. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, next. We, we, we've got Michael Usain Bolt. Oh, um, okay. Yes, yeah. okay. Uh, we'll work with that. What, we've got yeah, Jan Rathaisky. We've got Morgan Williams Big up Jan. there. Yeah, we've got... Uh, yeah, uh, Ollie Payne's up there. Who else have we got? Lewis Parker's up there. So uh, that's going to be our eight drivers. Uh, so Max Mackler, car one. Ollie Payne, car two. Lewis Parker, three. Mark Styles, four. Michael Bolt, five. Morgan Williams, six. Jan Rathaisky is seven. And Christian Donath is number eight. So just real quick, some keen-eyed viewers among you may have noticed that there are little jumps in the timing. Um, we are working as always, with the local uh, producers, or local club folks here. Um, hey, David Ongaro says, hey, guys. What's up, David? Uh, well, champ, what, three-time world champ is uh, watching. So is this another class you're going to get into, David, maybe? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Rob from New Zealand dropping in to watch. Here we go. Top spec of, top heat of spec out on track. Absolutely. So Max Mackler leads away. Um, it's always interesting to see how, like the top heat, they all position themselves. Um, so that's um, quite impressive. The gaps on the split. Max has already passed. I think that must have been Christian um, that he'd caught and passed before the end of, of lap number one. Yep. So uh, number one, that that's the one that's uh, just fired himself into um, into the barrier so he's now behind uh, yes um, he's, he's now behind uh, Ollie Payne on circuit so if we can move forward one car uh, to the white and red coloured car off the end of the main straight this uh, Ollie Payne um, currently running in second place actually over three laps let's just see how that settles down because uh, Lewis Parker um, quick over um, at the opening laps to start with. Uh, Max running a little bit down the order because of that moment. Obviously, with uh, when you're looking for three consecutive laps, if in one of those you spit the car into the barrier, you're going to be down towards the bottom. Jan Rathaisky up into second. And uh, no, Ollie Payne's just jumped back up forward. Morgan Williams running in third position. 33-3. So actually, those times that... Um, that that's Simon uh, and Simon Lauter and Finley did in the last heat. That was around the same. That was like a, a 33 something. Um, that, that was like a low 33. They, they were down in the sort of 33s. Uh, Lewis Parker, though, 33 0 over three laps. Let's see if we can find Lewis's car. He is the yellow front, orange center, pink rear. Um, he's just heading out onto the main straight now, following Michael Bolt down the main straight. So uh, Lewis um, has opened up there. He's found some pretty serious pace. Um, that uh, That's really, really strong. Got a transponder out there that is, by process of elimination, I think that other car that wasn't counted, that's Max Mackler. There we go. Yeah, that's just been uh, assigned to him. And he has jumped himself up the order. So uh, Lewis Parker from Ollie Payne from Morgan Williams. Um, that's some serious pace, though, from, from Lewis. Um, so it looks like, actually, the pace from Finley Whitelock and from Simon Lauter in the previous heat over three laps was pretty genuine. They're watching. Ollie Payne now to the front. Let's see if we can pick up Ollie's car again. He is the white and red-coloured car. He's just heading round... 
Uh, not that white and red coloured car. He's just heading out onto the main straight now. There we go. This uh, Ollie Payne then. Quickest over three laps so far. Catch in the car of Morgan Williams. Just dives inside him, down off the end of the main straight. Jan Rothyski also going well with the number seven car. So if we go two cars back to the white colored car, that is Jan Rothyski. Uh, Jan also looking very quick in modified as well. Uh, Jan currently quickest over um, three laps in modified practice. So these front three, um, pretty close. Ollie Payne leading it with 33-0, uh, uh, as is Lewis Parker. Jan Rathyski with a 33-1 over three laps. Jan, one of the uh, very few racers running more than one class here. Uh, yes, and doing it sort of by himself, not with a mechanic um, as well, which is um, a, a brave effort. Yeah, um, Iron Man style. Yeah, <laughs> um, with, um, with with only sort of seven, um, effectively, you know, uh, seven heats, uh, eight heats, sorry, of um, of, of one twelve to go. I'm trying to trying to race in two of them. Um, obviously, then you have to marshal for two of them as well um, it doesn't leave you a lot of time so uh, if it feels like a good idea till something goes wrong um, I would say with that one it's uh, Jan Rathyski going quite nicely on this one what have we got we're just coming up to five minutes in uh, times are going to have settled down a little bit now wouldn't necessarily expect to see anybody launch themselves up the order um, over three consecutive laps certainly in the stock class by this point you've taken the best out of your you, you, the traction in your tyres, your additive, um, your cell voltage will have dipped very slightly. So pretty sure that the, the order is going to be fairly well fixed uh, at the front of this one. Let's see who else we can spot out there for a little bit. Let's have a look at uh, Morgan Williams. He is the white and blue coloured car. He's on the main straight now. Let's run with Morgan for a little bit. You can see Morgan down to fifth place over three laps. Uh, car just uh, a little bit, looks a little bit safer than some of the cars earlier, uh, particularly off the end of the main straight. You can just see it's, it, it's, it looks like it's just that little bit more resistant and reluctant to turn. Uh, hopping around slightly. See who else is out on the circuit that we can see. We haven't run with uh, Christian Donath. He is the all green coloured car. Should be nice and easy to pick up. Coming out onto the main straight now. Let's run with Christian for a few laps. Well, that one's nice and easy to spot. Yep. That uh, gets a, a little bit order as we get up the heat list. Um, just to see what uh, what people are doing and what people are getting up to. So Christian looking pretty good over, I, I, it looks pretty pretty strong over an eight minute run. Um, looking at the sort of predicted times over um, o over eight minutes, you've got, you know, Ollie Payne who's, who's currently running quickest with a, um, you know, a, a, a 40, 43 in two he's predicting. Um, you've then got, you know, Mark Stiles running in seventh position in this currently. He's predicting a time over eight minutes, um, like eight seconds slower than that. So, uh, although it looks like a, you know it's less than a lap that you're talking over uh, over eight minutes, um, it, it's it's going to be super tight when we get into the the eight minute runs. 
um, and, and little mistakes are going to dictate uh, the the outcome of the the event possibly. But uh, last 15 seconds now. Ollie Payne from Lewis Parker, Jan Rathyski, Christian Donath, Morgan Williams, Max Mackler, uh, Mark Styles, Michael Bolt. So cars just getting called in at the end of the run. So we're going to have a look at the, uh, see if we can see the overall uh, ranking list for practice. So actually, Simon Lauter. Um, no, that hasn't updated yet. Let's just have a look. Oh. Just waiting for update on that. So there we go. Um, Ollie Payne uh, from Lewis Parker, Jan Rathyski, Christian Donath. Morgan Williams, Max Mackler, Mark Styles, Michael Bolt. It's a very uh, British and German looking at top heat there. Just waiting for our overall practice to, to update. So there we go. Um, Ollie Payne is quickest then from Lewis Parker, Jan Rathyski. Simon Lauter in fourth overall from the uh, early heat. Finley Whitelock fifth, so we did think that they were fast. Uh, Christian Donath is in sixth position. Morgan Williams seventh. Max Mackler eighth. Stefan Schultz again from uh, an earlier heat uh, in ninth. And uh, Mark Stiles currently in tenth over three laps. Got the um, small break now while the... Uh, LC Racing class goes on. So just see those head out on the circuit. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a relaxed time for uh, this is this is Ben break time on uh, Ben, our uh, camera operator, this weekend. Uh, take some uh, learning how to take some excellent photos <laughs> of these very small and fast cars and uh, yeah so two five minute heats of these LC Racing 14th scale foam tire cars There's a lot more racers out now I think I think it's the uh, the locals have actually appeared now <laughs> is what it looks like quite possibly yeah we, we were um, these will be a, maybe a little faster than we were seeing before then uh, well, we, we were getting slightly alarmed during practice yeah. when there were one or two cars circulating. Yeah, but those were uh, Martin Hoodie's son and uh, Mikhail from uh, Hobby Wing. Uh, uh, well, they're in the next heat. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Th that's his, um, and it was still just the two of them. <laughs> but maybe there'll be more in the next one. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, uh, this yeah. is uh, not part of the European Championship. Again, this is uh, you know basically like a, a local just fun racing class. Um, but Absolutely. gives us a good time to um, just have a look and just we're going to have a look at the at the race time clock on this. You guys may have noticed that uh, that uh, it is kind of uh, glitchy a little bit. Um, and so what the local organizers have done is kicked off a bunch of computers that were on the uh, on the Wi-Fi network. And because um, who knows, they were probably downloading Netflix and all sorts of things. Uh, and it looks like my RCM is uh, counting. Well, no, there's a little bit of a tiny hitch, but less than the eight or ten seconds we were seeing previously, but keeping an eye on it. Um, but anyway, uh, just wanted to say that uh, we had, uh, we, we as in the Royal We, me, uh, talk to uh, some of our event sponsors, um, the representatives that are here this weekend. So we're hoping to have them on the chat. Um, uh, Holt Sultan and uh, Mikhail, who I mentioned just now uh, from Hobby Wing, uh, hoping to pop them in. Uh, we've got uh, Nicola from Lens Bodies uh, here as well, and Andy Murray from Schumacher. Uh, he's very busy because he's uh, basically mechanicking for Orlowski, 
uh, world champion um, in this category. And uh, so he's, he's quite busy. He actually used the word stressed, which for a normal British person is means that they're really, really stressed, right? It, it means they need a cup of tea. Yes. That's what, that's <laughs> yes. what it means. But, a but, but, for, but for an engineer-minded Brit to say they're stressed means they need maybe a kettle of tea, which means they're very, very, very busy. <laughs> so we'll try to talk to them. Uh, obviously, would we leave it to them to find uh, a time that they're available um, to uh, to pop in. Obviously, uh, do want to thank all of our event sponsors. Of course, this uh, Efra One Twelfth Euros from Sicily, brought to you by Tony Sport as our title sponsor, and also Schumacher Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec, and Hobby Wing. So other brands are available, but these are the best brands because they help us, RCTV, bring it to you for free. Absolutely. And uh, great venue here, Paradise RC Arena in uh, Messina on the northeast coast of Sicily. I am looking forward to some granite later on. That's some good stuff. That's at the uh, driver's banquet, isn't it? Yes. Which is uh, being held later on this evening after the first round of qualifying. So five minute races for these uh, LC racing cars that are out on circuit at the moment. Like a uh, 114th scale touring car. Heading around on the circuit. Barry Lynch finding my um, Jody Schechter uh, slight slip, quite amusing. Earlier on, so uh, yeah, feel free to say hi to us in the comments. We will try and interact with you as much as we can over the course of the day. Uh, free practice or the uh, practice sessions, they become a little bit... Um, uh, they're a little bit more open, a little less prescribed. We have more, a uh, little bit more chance to, to view them. Chase asking, what motors are these cars using? Uh, that's a very good question. I believe these are uh, 21 and a half uh, brushless. I will endeavour to find out during the break. I haven't taken an awful lot of notice of... Uh, of this class particularly. It's uh, in there as a, a little bit of an opportunity for us to to catch our breath, make sure that everything's working okay. It's, uh, good to see Chase taking an interest. Chase, obviously, the uh, BRCA uh, 112 to go junior champion. Couldn't make it here this weekend, but uh, well done to him for, for that. And um, closing in on his uh, on his dad, have managed to, to slay him at the last round of the, the national series. So uh, Chase certainly on the list of people I used to be able to beat. That's a, a very long list. It's turned into a bit of a scroll. Nice bit of parking on a car directly in front of us. See uh, Michal Olowski going out there and popping that car back on track. Yellow wheels as well. So that was the first of two heats. Next heat of this LC racing class ready to go. We've got uh, Philip Huddy. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of the Italians out there, and uh, Mihal Milanovic from Hobby Wing. So one more five-minute run.
Sim Racer in the in the chat is asking, "Whoa, where's Nick Damon?" <laughs> uh, and I won't say the rest, but uh, yeah, Nick is next going to appear on the coverage uh, for the GT8 Euros coming again from Sicily, which is Giardini Naxos track, which is about uh, half an hour south of here. Yeah, yeah, um, so we passed it on the way here yesterday, didn't we? It's yeah. uh, about 30 minutes down the coast. It's a beautiful track, and I wish I was going. I would be going, but unfortunately, I have uh, prior engagements. <laughs> but um, yeah, Nick will be on that, and he'll also be doing the 1 8th buggy Euros from Ongaro Ring, and also, of course, the Worlds, I'm pretty sure. So uh, still uh, slightly less out in uh, this heat at the moment. A little less uh, full than the Yeah, I thought I thought ones. they'd uh, I thought they have more in this one. Well, there's supposed there's nine signed up, so maybe they'll maybe uh, because it's a work day, they'll there'll be more tomorrow. Who Quite knows? possibly. It's uh, yeah, uh, everyone that's missing um, is uh, Italian. Ah, uh, yeah, there you so, go. So um, it's a local class for local people and for international people obviously <laughs> we have uh, Mihal Milanovic leading this one he's, uh, he's usually our Mr. Hobbywing uh, that we see at these uh, at these events well, I believe actually on speaking to him he wasn't planning on racing this <laughs> weekend he, he sort of he turned up and um, saw that this class was running and yeah. the car thrust at him <laughs> um, within sort of half an hour. So well, the, uh, Ma Martin Hoody said that, oh, yeah, I, I, I bought, the, bought a car for my son to race. And he's, he's up there uh, guiding his son around the track. So, yeah, it's uh, purely like last minute sort of thing. <laughs> but fun enough. And uh, like uh, Mikhail Olowski was just telling me, it uh, gets more, more people, um, more entries. So it's, it's all good. Chase saying, uh, I, uh, although he can now beat me, uh, I beat him at the last Euros. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. That's my, uh, that's going to be my, my claim to fame when... You got it third, didn't you? Or did you uh, win your, your final? Um, no, I, I ended up third I remember overall. you got a po you, you got a trophy because I, I, I have a photo. Yeah, I, I did get <laughs> a trophy. Um, I somehow managed to lead. Of, of, <laughs> I, I, I won one leg of... I won the first leg of yes. the final. Um, I led about seven and a half minutes, or, or well, even longer. It was like seven minutes, 45 seconds. Was it the important, m the most important seven minutes and 45 seconds? No, it was the first <laughs> seven minutes and 45. There you go. Um, and I, I somehow contrived to finish third overall, having ah. won a leg and led the... So having led 15 minutes, 45 seconds... <laughs> Um, of of the required 16 that I needed to lead <laughs> um, to, to win the, the final. Um, I somehow managed to finish third. I didn't even finish second. <laughs> I finished third. It was, um, yeah, that, that, wasn't, uh, that, that wasn't great. <laughs> um, I know a guy who finished second in all three finals at a, at a U.S. Nationals touring car, and he, and he won. He won. He won the championship for that particular class. By finishing second in, in three finals. Well, for, I mean, famously <laughs> last year, Mark Stiles won the the British Championship without oh, winning yes. a round. Yeah, we had a um, we had a good laugh about that, didn't yeah. we? So uh, he, he, he managed years. to uh, he managed to do that, and um, actually he won a round this year um, and finished second overall um, in, in that <laughs> one. So uh, yeah, that was a uh, bit better results, but uh, but worse. Clearly, so, the 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 strategy overall then is to finish second at every every round. Oh, Clearly, <laughs> uh, who have we got? We've got uh, Glenn Atterton asking if there's a uh, heat list link. Uh, yeah, that'll be on my RCM. Uh, if you check out my RCM, um, you'll see all of the timing information. That's yeah, going on there. there's a direct link on the Efra.ws uh, website. There's a red banner which you can has a couple of links you can click in there, and that will lead you to the event page, which has this video that you're listening and watching to embedded straight on it and um, there's a link to the live timing on there as well or you can just search for it on myrcm.ch try to make it as, as easy as possible and uh, to, to follow along yep so again welcome to you if you are just joining us and uh, wondering what's going on these 
don't look much like 112 scale cars <laughs> if you're expecting to see 112 scale well, cars. Well, 114th, they're close. They're, they're close. <laughs> um, they're, they're actually, weirdly, they're 114th scale, but they're bigger than 112 scale. Yeah, scale's weird in the RC market, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, a little bit disconcerting, <laughs> but... Um, I think they're they're based off of one fourteenth scale buggies, aren't they? Uh, These, but, yes, um, of course. Which, well, just uh, like the early touring cars were. Yes. So uh, th these very much uh, evoking the the ethos of the early touring cars. Um, very small batteries. I think they're like three eighty motors. They're quite small motors. Macau overheating again. I think on. Uh, again, these are. I believe he's running it literally straight out of the box. So he. Uh, he was chatting with some of the locals about what to do about the, I think the speedo, either the speedo's overheating or the motor's overheating, and they were saying maybe if, if only put a he fan knew on someone it. that could, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, proficient with uh, with electronics. But yeah. uh, of course, uh, <laughs> Michael um, looking fairly quick. He's I mean, uh, why is he over? He's, he's three cut out, seconds cut out again. Uh, he's three seconds faster over three laps though. Oh really? Okay, so yeah. the, over the over the important period of time, he's uh, yeah, he's he's done all right. He he has. Is is he faster than the locals? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, right. I mean his best lap of uh, a thirteen zero five um, compared to Marco Navaria, uh, thirteen uh, sorry fourteen one three one. So he's over a second quicker on a lap. I was just wondering against the other locals because Marco Navaria is about um, let's he's um, about eight. Let's have a look um, and see what is going on. If we can get some sort of ranking this for practice. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, Daniel Shepis is uh, fastest over three laps right. from uh, Alessio Navaria, uh, Pietro Lucifora, Michael Milanovic uh, is fourth currently over three laps. But that's all behind us now. We're back to the uh, back to the 12th scale mod category now. Yep. So this is the six and a half turn blinky uh, class for modified. Nicola Maroni off first. So uh, Mr. Lens Bodies, one of our event sponsors. So we'll obviously be cheering for him. Absolutely. Uh, who else have we got? Alessandro Bianchi, Lucas Larson, uh, Alessandro Brunelli. Uh, we've got Alexander Anderson, Marcus Andreasen. Oh, your favourites. Oh, yes. Marcello <laughs> Galli, Marco Mazzini, Wee! and Marco McCuny. So a uh, little bit quicker, these cars, uh, and quicker than the cars that we saw earlier. So Nicola running the white-coloured car. You would think He's as a as a body shell manufacturer, he would have uh, even his practice bodies would look pretty sweet. But he's he's going for total performance, isn't he? Total performance, <laughs> super lightweight. Um, obviously, running the uh, the lens body shell. Um, not a huge number of them in um, in attendance this weekend um, of, of those bodies. The uh, Ponente. Um, is we don't the we don't have any marshals out actually. We only have three racers in the race, and um, we haven't had anyone call for any volunteer marshals. No, I think it's during worrying. controlled practice, it's not too much of an issue. It's when when qualifying proper starts that uh, they'll be they'll be looking for it. Uh, again, you, you're looking to get sort of over over three laps. Uh, Simone Bonucci says, "Go Mazzini, go!" Yes, here, here's now where we can all shout. Come on, Mazzini! Let, let's see if we can find him. Car number eight. Um, <laughs> These, uh, these cars traveling a little bit quicker. At a high rate of knots. Yep. So I we... Six. We're, We're doing the usual, let's let's wait a lap. Uh, no, there he is. He's the lead of the, well, the second of the... Of, of the white colored cars? Yes. <laughs> so he's just heading out towards the main straight now. And passed again. Yep. There we go. So Marco currently running in eighth position in the heat. So car looking a uh, little bit wayward, a uh, little bit scared of it, not really wanting to turn in. 
or commit to turning in. But, uh, and then as you open the throttle, you get the fierce power delivery uh, of the 6.5 motors. You can see uh, off the end of the main straight there, struggling to get the car slowed down and turned in. Who's looking quick at the moment? Marcus Andreasen, the six car. Let's see if we can spot him somewhere. Do the cars tend to, or the, do the drivers, you were telling me about um, using a, uh, a throttle curve or a braking curve. Yeah. Um, do the cars tend to scrub off any speed naturally? As they, as uh, they, they, they the do, yeah. The more lock that you put on, they, the more speed you scrub off. So particularly with stock, um, it becomes a bit of a, a challenge. It's like self-preservation of corner speed, uh, of wanting to keep the cars moving um, and get yourself sort of around the track. You can see um, actually Nicola... Um, He's got Alex Hagberg working on his car just under the driver's the pit, roster. Ben, that um, chap le uh, kneeling down, that's Alexander Hagberg? It is. Uh, European champion in this class, what, seven, eight times? Yes, uh, reigning champion as well. Yes, um, he after he grabbed it back off of Orlowski. He, he did. <laughs> um, so, obviously, last year, Michael, uh, Michael won the stock class. Um, Michael not running uh, the stock class this year. Um, but uh, looks like a, a little bit of a tyre change going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I noticed. I noticed Nicola and Alex ha doing this uh, in the last round of control practice as well. So I'm, I'm curious. I mean, obviously they're just going for three fast laps, so maybe they're like just true down to just like rubber I, bands. I, 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 <laughs> I think on, it's on the more wheels. they're they're changing the the thing that you have uh, with with any 12 to go race is. Uh, or certainly on a like a temporary layout. No one had really driven around this circuit before today. Um, so the track is, the, the grip is building and evolving throughout the, the course of the week. So um, sometimes you want to get an idea of what tyres might work, what might not work. Um, and you never get an opportunity to be on exactly the same track again. So it, it's sometimes a, a good op idea to get a feel for what's going on. And Alex will be watching this closely because Alex will be out on track later. This, this might save Alex. Yeah, this could be a practice session more for Alex than for Nicola. O almost. If, if Nicola's car suddenly looks you know, immediately hooked up and much better and starts lighting up the timing screens, um, Alex may well have two sets of tyres over there prepped and ready to yeah. go on, uh, depending on uh, you know, what he feels he needs to do. Um, and you know, what is best to, to put on the, the car, put on the track. Yeah, Nicola That's is Mr. Hot Race, so um, yeah, he's uh, he, he is very potentially doing some development work for <laughs> for Alex. Is his basically his lead driver in this category? He is, yes, absolutely. Uh, who's leading at the moment? Alessandro Brunelli, the number four car. Let's see if we can uh, pick up the four. Two car, five car, four car is the is the white and pink coloured car. So the number four car is just heading out towards the main straight now. Here we go. So, bit of a uh, interesting line off the end of the main straight. Phoenix Favoretto saying mod is where. How is racing? He's P2, four tenths shy of Jan Rathajski. Jan actually looking very, very quick at the moment. Um, certainly over three laps. Um, car looking pretty safe, pretty stable. Just uh, seeing Alessandro, who we are running with at the moment. Uh, just pulling out of the way, uh, letting some cars go. He's starting now to lose the rear of the car off the end of the main straight. So very quick earlier. This is also uh, another thing, particularly with with modified, um, that you, you need to ha you know, try and hang on to the, the tires uh, for as long as possible. It's really easy to, to use the grip, use the traction uh, that you've got, and all of a sudden you find it's not there. Uh, one lap it's there, you turn in and you're away, and the next lap you crank it in off the end of the main straight and it just wants to go round. Car looking a little bit pointy around neutral. 
You see a little vicious twitch there coming onto Main Street. The car starting to look fairly evil now with uh, just over one minute of this run remaining. We'll run with him to home, but uh, car not looking nice. Uh, be wanting to sort that out, certainly when it gets to racing um, on Sunday and we start getting into finals. He'll want to try and find a way to calm that down. Um, hang on to the rear of the car and in fact he's uh, pulled that off to retire uh, let's see then if we can pick up Nicola the white car yeah they're just finishing the runs I believe so they, there's 30 seconds left ah, okay sorry so uh, Nicola just entering the main straight now so let's run with him to home we saw him in earlier for a tyre change courtesy of Alex Hagberg car looks quite stable a little bit resistant to to turning um, you always tend to find that with these LMP cars the grip as the grip appears uh, goes towards the back of the car um, because you've got a, a larger rear tire contact patch than you have front so, so um, yeah always tends to push on a little bit or tend towards pushing on a little bit Ant Lockyer saying morning. Good morning, Ant. Buongiorno. Got uh, the penultimate heat of modified coming up next. Uh, then we got the top heat of modified. There you go. You can see uh, overall results. So uh, Alessandro Brunelli, some quick laps early on. Uh, so he ran out of traction towards the rear so he, he'd uh, probably do with um, yeah, taking taking a few of those tents and I don't know you'd, you'd probably trade some of that single lap speed for a little bit of stability later on who have we got in this one then Rosario Giamo, Christian Donath uh, one of our two class nutters uh, Martin Huddy, Thomas Liptak, Alessio Mazzio Torsten Muller, Mario Neri Rene Jan and Stuart Cartwright, another dual-class runner. Timing has started into eight minutes on this one. You can already see the seven car, Mario Neri, prone in front of us. Just started going. I mean, it's never going to work, not with black wheels on the rear and yellow on the front. That's, uh, that, that's a, a, a bit of a styling disaster <laughs> it's uh styling it, equals aerodynamics yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's it's not good for racing feng shui that one that's uh really going to uh, put people off alessio mazio with the five car uh, he's just in the middle front. bit just coming to the end in the twisty bits at the end of the lap on straight now running race paint he so is that's why he's fast yep race paint is fast let's see if we can pick him up so he's the White front, blue centre, orange rear car on the main straight now. There we go. And he is a uh, two or three time European champion, I should say. <laughs> he, he is. Um, new class not, for Alessio. Not, not, yeah, not in electric. So he's mostly known for nitro, yeah. although he did win GT8 electric last year, but he was doing very well in the nitro category as well. Yes. Um, um, obviously, Alessio's yeah. local, uh, local track, um, which is, I, I think, what's prompted him to, to come and have a go, come and have a play. But uh, you can see he's carving his way through the field. Um, just catching up. I think that was uh, Stu Cartwright that he's just made his way past. It was. So uh, very, very quick driver is Alessio. Um, as you're seeing with some of the other guys, um, like Simon Lauter in, in stock, um, you've got uh, people who don't normally race this class, but... Uh, finding that the cars are much, much better than they used to be, able to 
throw down good cars. Uh, if you throw down a good car and you're a good driver, you're going to be fast. You see, uh, like six tenths quicker, uh, well, in fact, eight tenths quicker over three laps than, uh, than Martin Huddy running in second place. Martin with the three car. Let's just see if we can find Martin Huddy out there. Uh, did see there was some race paint for Martin, but he doesn't look like he's running it. Uh, no, Martin's the all-white coloured car, I believe. Which, or one of the all-white coloured cars. He's the all-white coloured car on the main straight now. So this is Martin Huddy, current second place man that we're running with. In fact, I say current second place man. He's just dropped down to fifth place. Thomas Liptak up into second position. Five minutes remaining. A bit of a launch over the curbs for Stu Cartwright in the back of shot there. Let's have a look, see if we can find the four car of Thomas Liptak. He is the green coloured car. That is, that's the one. We've uh, got him on screen. Good work from Ben. Down the main straight. So again, car looking, uh, looks like a very good race car. Um, it's a little bit resistant to, to turning. Uh, having to use the bumps off the end of the main straight, but you can see through this chicane that he comes through here, just having to like hesitate on the throttle slightly through there. I think you'll be seeing some of the quick guys um, sort of building the throttle up all the way through this this chicane, which is a, a fast sort of right left uh, as we come out onto the uh, towards the main straight. But uh, doing what he needs, getting round, nice and consistent at the very least. Just it's that little bit of hesitation in the middle of the corner. What we were talking about earlier about the scrubbing of speed. Can just see again as he comes through there one more time. It's just. It turns in, it initiates the turn, but it just doesn't hold on in the middle of the corner. Just want a, You just feel like you want a little bit more bite uh, just to, to turn that in and, and get that hooked in uh, a, a little bit better, a little bit tighter. But uh, we've got a retirement. So Giamo Rosario running in second position now with the number one car. Let's see if we can spot him. He is the other all-white coloured car out there. Is uh, Giamo. He looks like he's got some bits of fluoro orange inside the wing end fences. It's down the main straight, so uh, another great job from Ben to pick him up. Comes firing past the car of Mario Neri. Mario having to dive out the way. Like uh, Stu Cartwright's done the step back of shame on the rostrum. That uh, sinking feeling where you uh, take one step back, look down at your transmitter, flick the power button off. Pretend it's a problem with your radio. Yep, the the, uh, the sort of dejected, um, yep, uh, look there, slightly dejected look. What do we got? Less than two minutes left. And just waiting. Maceo's also come off the uh, off the rostrum, but he's uh, still leading. He so is, yeah. It's, uh, it's I didn't see what happened with his car, though. Uh, he got tangled up with uh, another car off the end of the main straight. Ah. So um, he had a, a little bit of a coming together, dropped him down the field slightly.
just over a minute left. Like we said, order should remain fairly constant at this point when you're looking at timing over three laps. Uh, Thomas Liptak in third position. Let's just see if we can spot him with the four car. He is the uh, light green colored car. He's just heading out onto the main straight now. So there we go. That's uh, him in center of shot. So having a bit of a, a coming together with a um, couple of cars. Less than 30 seconds left. Out in the middle of the track. So uh, you can see right at the end of this uh, modified heat, everybody's starting to struggle. Not many finished. Alessio Mazzio taking that one then from Giamo Rosario. Thomas Liptak, Rene Jan, Martin Huddy, Christian Donath, Stu Cartwright, Mario Neri, and Torsten Muller. We didn't see out there on circuit. Bit of track repair going on. And then set for the top heat of Modified. Again, welcome to us if you are just joining our coverage here on RCTV. This is the EFRA 112th European Championships. Uh, the end of practice round number one. So this is the top heat. Bringing you this coverage in conjunction with our event sponsors, Tony Sport, uh, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, RCXX Shock, Montec, Hobbywing and Zen Racing. Cars being released out onto the circuit. So like we said, Jan Rothyski uh, after practice being quickest over three consecutive laps. Alex Hagberg will be uh, off car number one currently as uh, reigning European champion. So clock has started. Eight minutes begins. Looking for drivers fast over three laps. Some familiar names in this one. Alex Hagberg, Oli Payne, Jan Rathyski, Lewis Parker. Mark Reinhardt, Rene Doctor, Marcus Mobers. Running with Jan Rathyski and his race paint. He is the white center, oh, sorry, white front, orange center, black rear car. He is chasing Oli Payne off the end of the main straight now. Alex Hagberg running behind him. So a uh, bit of a, a J turn there from Jan. Oli Payne to the front. Let's see if we can spot him. He was uh, quickest in stock. He is the white front, red center car. He is just coming out onto the main straight now. So he's uh, chasing down Mark Reinhardt. Come out onto the main straight. So look, in off the end of the main straight. 
Ollie's car looking a, a little bit happier to turn than Marx. So let's see if that plays out later on uh, in terms of rear traction. See Ollie's car hopping about there quite nicely. The pair of them catching Lewis Parker. So Lewis not as close to Ollie uh, in stock as he was in modified. Jan Rathajski, we ran with him earlier. He is in second position. Mark Reinhard, he is the all pink coloured car. Uh, he is one car in front. Let's watch him down the main straight. So two tenths off of Ollie over three laps. But uh, car looking a little bit more locked in. Might help later on in terms of hanging on to traction. Who else? Alex Hagberg up into second. Let's see if we can spot him. He's the white and green colored car on the main straight now. So Alex running his race paint. Always helps make life a little bit easier. Let's just see reigning European champion in this class. Car looks really good, really smooth. Very much in control. Even off at the end of the main straight, doesn't look uh, quite as scary as some of the other cars out there. You can see Alex closing towards the back of Ollie Payne's car. So Ollie having done those three quick laps earlier, but uh, over a run, currently Alex Hagberg is predicting some five seconds faster uh, than Ollie Payne. So Ollie's pace uh, costing him a little bit towards the end of a run, maybe. Be something to watch out for in qualifying later on. See who else is out there. Let's see if we can pick up the six car of Mobas. He should be fairly easy to spot because he's on the yellow wheels. He's the he's a minty green coloured car with the yellow wheels. He's just heading out onto the main straight now. So Marcus flicks it right, flicks it left. Down the main straight. Turns in quite nicely. Car looks like it's stalling a little bit in the corner. Gets it all crossed up there. Managing to hang on to it. Let's have a look at Michael Orlowski now in third position. Uh, world champion in this class, the number three car. So... He'll be one of the white colored cars. He is the sort of last of the white colored cars. He's just heading out onto the main straight now. So Michael throwing some shapes out on the circuit. With just under three minutes remaining. Currently, Ollie Payne from Alex Hagberg from Michael Olowski, Jan Rathajski, <coughs> Mark Reinhardt. So, like one and a half tenths <laughs> between those five drivers over three laps. Uh, Ollie Payne looks like he stopped on circuit. Just getting himself moving again. So, remember, although uh, Ollie currently quickest over three laps, that's not necessarily where you want to be um, if you're going to be struggling for traction uh, at the end of the run. Starting to see Michael Orlowski struggling here off the end of the main straight. Car just uh, sliding sideways, taking all of its corner speed off. Alex Hagberg's looking the same. This is where, looking over an eight-minute run, Alex Hagberg currently predicting the quickest time. So Michael Orlowski now uh, having... Pulled in at the side of the track. Let's 
just have a look at let's have a look at Lewis Parker's car. He is the yellow front, pink rear car. Uh, I was going to say off the end of the main straight, but uh, he's just come to a bit of a grinding halt. Trying to keep it moving, trying to keep it circulating. So lots of cars now uh, starting to arrive off the end of the main straight backwards. It's not going to help you over the course of a eight minute run particularly. But uh, quite a bit quicker than uh, Alex Hagberg, 45.801. Mark Reinhard, 45.806. Those guys looking like the quick guys over an eight minute run. Um, very slightly slower over one lap. Or over three laps. But uh, they're the ones that are looking like they've got slightly more locked in cars as we come into the final 30 seconds. Uh, there's going to be uh, a bunch of guys trying to figure out how they can make the rear tyres hang on a little bit longer. Uh, see what they can do with that. Timing's just finishing. So Oli Payne going to take this one over three laps. But it uh, looks like... Uh, a little bit different over eight minutes. I'd say uh, Alex Hagberg looks in a, a strong position. Um, only half a tenth back over three laps on Ollie, but uh, lapping much, much more consistently uh, at the end. Uh, Mark Reinhardt also looking like he's somewhere in the mix as well. A couple of seconds behind Alex Hagberg over the course of a run. So looking set for some good racing action later on. So... We now have a lunch break uh, in the time schedule. Um, lunch break is scheduled until 2 p.m. So yeah. we, we have an so hour break. <laughs> we have an hour break. So uh, yeah, so we'll pop the holding screen on because uh, there's basically not going to be any action. Uh, so you may as well look at a cool graphic. But be sure and come back and um, uh, at 2 o'clock Central European time,
Okay, welcome back. You are joining us here on RC Racing TV, uh, bringing you the EFRA 112th European Championships for 2024 from Messina in northeast coast of Sicily. Uh, I'd like to thank our event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing for helping us to bring you this coverage. Uh, just returning after a lunch break. Cars getting set then and released out onto the circuit. This is the practice session. Uh, so this, this is the second of the two uh, control practices. There'll be a, a reseed after this into heat order for qualifying. Uh, so after this, this round will take uh, about an hour and a half um, to complete. Uh, then we're going to have a reseed. We'll have the opening ceremony, and then we will have the first round of qualifying proper uh, that we'll be bringing to you starting off. Uh, looking at the timetable, um, that is scheduled to start at uh, 5.30 this evening. So uh, about an hour and a half per round. So, yeah, 5.30 this evening. Uh, we will be starting qualifying out on track at the moment we have got heat number one uh, over three consecutive laps this rather than over uh, an eight minute run we're timing so Averna Spanbrooker is the quickest car at the moment he is the number one car uh, looks like he's a fair bit quicker than everything everybody else he is the minty green colored car with the yellow wheels heading out onto the main straight now Let's run with Werner for a little bit. In fact, Lucas Larson's got himself up to the uh, top of the order with the six car, but we'll uh, we'll stick here for a little bit with Werner. Let's look for the six car then, our lead car. He is the, uh, let's have a look. I think he is the all blue colored car. He is the all blue colored car. He's just making his way out onto the main straight now. Being chased by some traffic that he's just passed. So making his way nicely round through the circuit off the end of the main straight. Still pretty bumpy there. And uh, cars looking a, a little bit like they uh, want to over-rotate off the end of the straight. But let's just see as uh, manages to, well, tries to negotiate some traffic, ends up nosed into the barrier. This is the six car of Lucas Larson leading this heat over three laps. Let's see who else is quick out there. Christian Geyer with the number two car. Let's see if we can spot Christian. Uh, I think Christian is the white, yellow, and kind of like Smurf blue colored car off the end of the main straight. There we go. So, yeah, we've picked him up. Christian running quite nicely out there. Third position in the heat. He is chasing round the car of Lucas Larson. Just using a quicker car in front of him. Sometimes that's a, a pretty good tactic just to tow you through the traffic. 
a little bit wide there uh, off the end of the main straight, but holding it together, it's just three consecutive laps again. That was a decent lap that's come together. Again, car looks a little bit safe, but nice to drive, consistent. Should be quick over eight minutes, tucks in nicely off the end of the main straight. Christian is some four tenths down over three laps currently. Just navigating some traffic there. Christian Guy, our third place man. Let's see who else is out on circuit at the minute. Uh, Alex D'Angelo with the nine car. Let's see if we can spot him somewhere. Nine car, he is the all orange colored car. He's just, uh, again, navigating his way through some traffic. It's just coming out onto the main straight now. So a little bit of a double steer there off the end of the main straight. We're starting to see now what have we got? Like two minutes 40 left. So uh, I think once we're getting past five minutes, starting to see some of these cars struggling a little bit out there. And that becomes a bit of a theme later on as well. Cars that are super fast over... Um, a few laps at the start. Just struggling to hang on to the rears. Times will be pretty stable now, not expecting anybody, particularly in the stock class, um, to launch themselves up the order this far into a run. Being timed over three consecutive laps. So naturally, you'd expect that at the start when you've got the highest battery voltage, you've got the most grip out of the tyres and freshly additived. Uh, that's the time that you'd expect to pump in the quick laps. Just moving out of the way of some traffic there. That was the six car of Lucas Larson. The lead car. I think he's got Michael Laws behind him. Let's run with Michael for a little bit. He is the golf colored car out there. The uh, kind of sky blue, the one that's just gone a little bit backwards. Yeah. into the final minute, so let's run from home. You can see proper wobble on there, off the end of the main straight from Michael. Just have another look, that was really unfortunate there as he uh, we just caught that on stream. Caught up someone else's accident. You can see that double steer again. Car's a little bit reluctant to turn initially, but then has the wobble on. Last couple of seconds of this heat number one.
Heat number two getting ready. Marcus Andreasen, Alexander Anderson, Jan Dietmar, Ole Thomas Brin, Tim Janssen, Tom Adams, Freddie Parker, Alessandro Calarese, and Mario Neri. Mario Neri, one of the drivers uh, attempting two classes this weekend. So again, welcome to you if you are just joining us here on RCTV. Bring you coverage of the EFRA 112th Euros from Messina on the northeast coast of Sicily. Bring you the coverage in conjunction with Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, uh, RCXX Shop, Montec, and Hobbywing. Joining us in seeding practice at the moment. Uh, second round of seeding practice going on. Uh, then we'll have a bit of a break whilst the opening ceremony carries on. Cars released out onto the circuit. So eight minute runs for these guys, but they are being timed over three consecutive laps. If you are just joining us on YouTube or Facebook, don't forget you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, and you can also join one of the uh, groups on Facebook, the RC Racing TV group. Uh, you can also catch over the course of the weekend uh, the H2GP coverage, uh, which is coming live from California. That's some hydrogen-powered RC Racing going on. Let's have a look and see who we're following at the moment down the main straight, this white and pink coloured car. That is the, I believe, the nine car of Alexander Anderson. So he is the leader at the moment. Uh, he's got a nice clear track in front of him as well. He had a nice clear track in front of him. Uh, he's catching a gaggle of cars pretty quickly. Carves his way past Freddie Parker. Uh, he's, that worked out pretty perfectly for him, to be honest. That, uh, everybody in front of him just kind of fell out of his way. Made some nice mistakes. Car looking pretty good. Looks very calm, collected. Someone uh, plays Popper Wheely coming out onto the main straight. See who else is looking fast out there. We've got uh, Marcus Andreasen with the two car. Let's see if we can pick up the two car. Two car is the orange and white colored car that is just heading out onto the main straight now. There we go. Car looks a bit um, like it wants to do the driver some damage. It'll, uh, it's it's fast, but that looks uh, a little bit scary, a little bit leery, a little bit edgy to drive. Driver will be sweating profusely, I think. Uh, trying to hang on to the back of that. Certainly over eight minutes. Uh, quick over five. Down the main straight once more. Lead car still looking pretty scary, pretty sketchy. Who else out there is quick? Uh, the four car, Jan Dietmar. 
Let's see if we can spot the four car out there. Four car is the white and green coloured car. Just the first of the cars on the main straight now. Yeah, and uh, not really respecting the curbs in the middle of that chicane. That's going to probably hurt him on uh, rear tyres later on in the run. But it is all good. Just at half distance now. Yeah, and just finding his way through some traffic. I think he's picked up a little bit of a body tuck at the front, has he? Maybe. Uh, it's just hooked up slightly, see if he can run that down the barrier. No, it seems content. Give it a bit of a rattle over a curb normally. You can uh, pop a little dent out of a body shell. Jan Dietmar running in the third position. Uh, where is he? He is uh, about quarter of a second down over three laps compared to Marcus Andreasen. A uh, pair of them got uh, Alex Anderson in between them as well. So, James, what are what are uh, the drivers saying uh, about uh, the condition of the track? Um, they're finding uh, it a little bit of a challenge. I mean, the, the track is pretty wide, pretty open, uh, very, very fast. They're finding it uh, a little bit of a challenge dealing with the bumps, uh, particularly off the end of the main straight. And uh, the, the theme seems to be keeping the rear tyres alive over, you know, beyond five minutes seems to be the biggest challenge um and is there um i mean there's no heat in these tires is there so there's no tire warmers or anything like that no, no i mean but you know like you say keeping the tires uh, alive the rear tires and the, the rear tires are going to wear out the fastest or will they i, I don't know how the uh w w what um, wears on these it, it's a it's a bit like reading tea leaves i mean look, looking <laughs> at the inside of the body shell is it's quite uh, instructive after a run, and okay. you, you, you're kind of looking for similar wear front and rear. Um, and that, that'll be the grains of foam that are coming off the tires, because these are j literally just uh, open or closed cell foam. Yeah, that, that's right. So. And you'll be typically you'll you'll be looking for something like um, point I don't know something like point three point four rear. Uh, maybe a little bit more on the front, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And that's um, 0 0.4 of a millimeter per run of yes. wear. Yes. Yeah. Over, the, uh, over the diameter. Yes. Yeah. Um, over the tire diameter that you'd see um, over the course of a run. Um, obviously, with uh, an anti-clockwise circuit, you'll probably see um, a little bit more sort of the front right tire um, and the, the rear right tire because you're just leaning on it very slightly harder. Um, most of the fast turns... Uh, predominantly coming out onto the main straight, um, you, you, you've got those loaded the most. So, if the, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, but I, you know, I, hopefully there's some, uh, some, some of the viewers that are out there who are maybe not running this class or not used to running foams. How, how, uh, if there's no heat in the tire, um, obviously there's, uh, we know that there's uh, tire sauce. Yeah. But is it the tire sauce that that softens the foam? Is that what wears out over the five minutes, and then and then it for the final three, two to three minutes, you're just kind of skating around? Pretty much, yeah. It it permeates the it, into the tire. It, it it sinks into the tire, um, and that's one of the the tuning options. Is sort of how long you soak right. uh, the the tire for. So how long you you let the the tire soak into the foam for. Um, it, it's not quite that simple because different types of foams respond. Some are more absorbent than others. Um, if you imagine different types of a, a sponge, uh, then additive will work with them and, and behave uh, differently with them. But um, it, it is a, a weird feeling. It's normally like flicking a switch. It's, there's, there's grip there, one lap. And then the next lap, you just arrive at a corner, turn in, and the car just swaps ends. Right. Okay. Um, so. Um, and, and that's why we see a lot of that happening at the at the towards the end of the run for ev even some of the good drivers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they, they've got traction, and then a lap later, they haven't. Um, it, it's it's just it's there, and it's it's 
then it's suddenly not. Um, it, it's not a progressive breakaway and a progressive slide. Um, it, it is literally like flicking a switch um, that uh, the, the traction suddenly runs out. So because we're timed over eight minutes later on, um, perhaps being a tenth slower over the first couple of minutes if you're you know a, t a tenth a lap slower over the first four minutes but you're half a second faster over the last four because you're not losing the back of the car you've got that traction you've got that drive because that's the other thing if the car's sideways going into the corner um, as you come off the corner um, it, you you're also lacking that forward drive which can um, can cost you quite a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, Sam Brooks asking, is there a control additive? Yes, Sam, there is a control additive. It's uh, Spider Blue is the control additive. So there's a, uh, a source, uh, a sourcing table or a sourcing section uh, that uh, drivers take their cars into. And uh, that is over to the right-hand side of the driver's rostrum. Uh, as you can see on screen, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Or follow if you're watching us on Facebook. Absolutely. So obviously, uh, a few seconds ago, we saw the drivers that are in this uh, in this uh, control practice heat, um, and you can see their last names up in the top right, uh, along with their the time that's shown there is the fastest three laps that they uh, consecutive laps that they are uh, have accomplished. Yep. So will um, shake itself out into some sort of order. Yeah. Um, over the next um, well. 20 seconds or so. You can see uh, Dan Bancroft uh, currently quickest over two laps from Mark Payne from Andy Thompson. Now, of uh, course, the, the rear tires are, are basically, there's no camber at, at all on the rear tires because it is a, a solid axle, so just straight across, just uh, equal yes, thickness. Yes, if, if you have camber on your rear tires, then... <laughs> there's um, something very wrong. So something is very, very <laughs> wrong. Um, then, um, yeah. Yeah, th then and, and also, the further question is, how does that actually happen? Because uh, your, your, your wheel will, or your axle will have bent Well, somehow. I mean, I, I suppose technically you, could, you, you can cut camber into the tire by truing at an angle. Um, yeah, it, well, it, I mean, would that actually do anything? I mean, you, you kind of lose traction in the, in the straight. Would you you'd have well very little traction in the straight, I'd imagine, and but in the corners, would it actually uh, do anything? I, I think it, it would be a function of how soft the the tire was, how much of an yeah, angle so it was, you, and how much it deflected. That would be the sidewall flex that you yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't really, I don't know. That'd be an interesting experiment, but I don't think it would do anything. Uh, yes, I think <laughs> it would be a, um, a yeah. It, it would mess with your head, and it's a, a further complication that. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure, looking at how much the drivers are currently scratching their heads in the pits, yeah. <laughs> uh, if we were to suggest that and introduce that um, further variable to them, <laughs> we would be um, invited to go forth and yeah. multiply yeah. Um, <laughs> by, um, yeah, by, by many of the, the drivers. Long walk off a short pier. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, so if, you're, if you're used to a nitro uh, on-road with foams, um, you'll see a lot of the tires will use, will have coned t rear tires. And it's, I was just, it's not something you, you will have in this class. But the, the front tires, you do have camber and caster and, uh, and toe and all that stuff. But for the rears, it's literally zero toe, straight across tires, uh, you know, just even wear, or you should have even wear. <laughs> something very wrong again uh, happening if you're having uneven wear on the back. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you do, like we said, the, the outside rear, um, you do tend to get a little bit more wear on, on, on that. <laughs> Not much, but um, an extra 0 0.1, 0 0.15 would, would you mil. maybe Would you maybe swap those every run? Or, you know, like swap sides every run if it's just... Minimal uh, wear and it's not certainly for for club racing. Yes, you you right, rotate okay. them across the car. Um, here, I would imagine that they're probably visiting the truer after each run to clean them up. Right. Okay. Um, so that you're you're starting sort of fresh each each time. Um, Which car should we be following here? So just let's to get a target. Uh, we have got uh, Dan Bancroft is the quickest car currently, so he'll be one of the oh, the all white coloured car. Uh, he is just heading round. Let's have a look. We should also maybe name the, <laughs> the section of the track. So it's. Uh 
it, it kind of uh, happens, uh, oh, it, we're lapping that quickly, I think. We're yeah, gonna... yeah. I mean, well, there's the far end, the twiddly bits where the where the where where our remote cam is. Yeah. Uh, we do switch to that every now and then. And then obviously the beginning and end of straight. And then I, I suppose the center carousel or something like that, we could call it. Uh, yep, okay. The, the, the big white bit, I mean, you know, where it says Paradise RC Arena. Yep, that's uh, the, the name of the track. So uh, you see Dan and uh, Mark Payne having a bit of a coming together. Let's run with the white and green car. Um, there's a few white and green cars out there, but pretty sure that is the car of Mark Payne that we're running with. We'll just confirm as it comes past. Yes, it is. The... Uh, So what are we hoping to see from uh, from some of the more uh, advanced, the quicker racers in, in these categories? Um, I, 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 I think. Um, I mean, what, what, what do you think we'll see in this second of the... This is the third, third time they've been on track, basically. Fourth, fourth time. Fourth time, yes. Fourth, fourth time they've been, been um, on track. And uh, they're just shooting for three consecutive fast laps, but they're still planning to do eight minutes a solid eight minutes uh, once the qualifying starts so what are what are they kind of is it is, is it all about setup and and or mental attitude trying to go for three minutes over versus or three laps versus eight minutes or are they starting to plan for the eight minutes and, and I, I think you you always plan for the eight minutes you uh, I, ultimately if you're quick you're quick but um, I, I think the um, being quick over over eight minutes is obviously harder than being quick over three laps. Uh, so I, I think the main aim is to get yourself somewhere in the top heat um, for for the quick guys. What they'll be looking for the, there's the, the top qualifying group. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the the top group and know that you're actually sort of fighting with um, with people. Um, David Spash is saying, in this era of racing, you just send it full punch. <laughs> um, yeah, but much um, back in, in David's day when everything was in sort of black and white um, <laughs> and, and like sepia, then, uh, yeah, it was a very different um, kind of um, k kind of driving. Um, it, it was all about uh, sort of conservation of, of battery power. Um, I think David famously, when he won the 98 Worlds, uh, finished his his run in 12 scale and then did um, did a couple more laps <laughs> full board just to rub it in um, <laughs> as everybody else dumped. So um, yeah, that's uh, David. Of course, running on what 800 Panasonics? <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably they, not. No, obviously they, they joking, would have been yeah. um, 1800, 1700s, uh, 1700s and two thousands. I think would have just yeah. been coming in. Um, Black so packs, SCRCs. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> the uh, well with the like the rainbow coloured. Yeah, uh, yeah. The coloured gold on the cell. Yeah, seventeen, seventeen hundred SCRCs. That um, that would have been um, yeah, pr pretty good. Uh, just uh, with just less than one minute left. Just coming in towards the end of this run, Dan Bancroft leading from Andy Thompson, Nigel Bowen, Alex Seiter, Mark Payne, Francesco Salva, Marco Pansera, Gianluca Lino. Uh, not seeing Torsten Muller out there on track. So 15 seconds left can really see now off the end of the main straight cars being backed in uh, building towards the top end yeah, we, we don't we don't cover RC drifting but sometimes we do <laughs> uh, yeah not um, yeah inadvertently I think we're we're going to be seeing a little bit of that this weekend um, that's I think that's going to be the story of it, it it's going to be people who look quick over three laps and then 
I suspect it will look a little bit different over over an eight minute run. Um, I, I think there'll be some different names maybe near the top of, of qualifying. I think um, Jan Rathajski looking pretty strong. Uh, but uh, there we go, Dan Bancroft, 35-1. Um, Alex Seiter, second, 35-5, uh, yeah. So, uh, like, three and a half tenths down. Nigel W, I raced with 1,400 and 1,700s and was stoked when Sanyo released the Black 2000s. Game changer. Yeah, absolutely. And after that, what was it? It was the GP, the the era of the GP batteries, wasn't well, it? Well, yeah, we, for we had, a little while. We had the the Sanyo two fours as well. And oh then we, yeah. We went to like the the Panasonic. And then there were twenty sevens and twenty eights. No, yeah, we had the Panasonics at three thousands. Yeah. And then we had the, yeah, the, then it was the the GP cells, um, and then the sort of the intellect cells when you had to. Mm. Uh, that that will bring most races from the <laughs> the sort of mid 2000s out in a cold sweat they're having to <laughs> on a wednesday night you, between racing sort of midweek having to to um you know equalize your cells and and look after them and yeah that was uh, not not a lot of fun <laughs> I, I remember when i tried to solder up my first uh, bulb discharger and basically dead shorted a full size <laughs> a fully charged pack <laughs> it's like oh what's this hissing noise yeah oh great so uh, yes, they, <laughs> uh, they they took some uh, they took some tickling they took some looking after. But, uh, heat number four now running. We had some uh, some very quick guys in this actually um, that are right up in, at the pointy end uh, of the stock class over over three laps. So Finley Whitelock, he is one of the orange coloured cars. There's two quick orange coloured cars in this heat. Finley is the brighter. Uh, of the two, he is just off the end of the main straight now. Uh, let's see if we can pick him up. There we go. So he's closing in on the rear of Jody Sherrett. As he uh, pops a little bit of curb, coming out onto main straight, navigates his way past Jody. Stefan Schultz also pretty fast. Uh, and the other orange car that we were following a little bit earlier was uh, Simon Lauter, the current um, stock European champion for touring car. The title that uh, he won last year in Germany. But uh, Simon, uh, not his usual class, 112 to go. But um, and looks like he's struggling a little bit further down the field at the moment. But uh, expect to see him... Launch his way up there. Uh, he's learning his way around. Was having a bit of a, a chat with him at lunchtime. Um, uh, sort of trying to. He's trying to gain an understanding of the the car and the class and what uh, what what stuff does, um, how how stuff changes, how how things affect it. Finley Whitelock, meanwhile, going pretty quick out at the front. And uh, yep, Simon Lauter has jumped up into second place. Finley actually really quick. Thirty three one five one. Um, bear in mind, Ollie Payne, I think, was uh, quickest with, uh, he was like a 33 flat um, over o over three laps. So, um, yeah, 33-0-2-2. So, really, really quick there from uh, Finley Whitelock. Um, with to 33-0-0-2. Uh, so, this is actually now the fastest um three lap run uh, that we have seen uh, Simon Lauter up into second with a 33-3 so he's about a tenth off um, off of what Finley's doing so really really good run here with Finley but you can already see the back of the car just stepped out there off the end of the main straight and that's what we were saying it's all right having that pace at the start of the run but let's just see what it does uh, it's better that time um, he didn't unsettle the car too much over the bumps he made a big um, gap on that uh, the white did, green car as well. although Simon has now hit the front with a 32, wow, 32.7. So let's see if we can find Simon's car. Simon is the other orange car. He's, I think, two cars back from Finley. There, there we, we go. Are. Got him out on the screen. So uh, 32.764 from Simon Lauter, um, proving the adage, if you're quick, you are quick. Let's just have a look at how his car looks. 
Looks really good, really nice down the main straight. Turns in. He's got a bit of a different line, actually, off the end of the main straight compared to uh, a lot of them. He, he's staying quite wide and then turning in quite late and giving himself a straighter line through the chicane there. A little bit much curb there. That's going to be a slow, sort of scruffy lap. But uh, Simon, the only driver under 33 seconds um, over three laps and quite a long way under. It's a 32.764, so nearly quarter of a second under. Um, over over three laps, <coughs> uh, just closing in on the rear of Finley Whitelock. Uh, some other traffic. I think that's Stuart Cartwright getting out of the way. It is. Uh, so Stuart uh, just getting out of the way. So these two cars we can see on screen. The two orange cars, the the class, of the field. Slightly slow start from Simon, but uh, really getting the hammer down now. Uh, best single lap time a 10.748. Uh, 10.925 for Finlay. Uh, none of the other drivers have got under 11 seconds. 11.182, the next quickest lap. So we're well into the uh, past the halfway point of the of the heat. We are, yes. Um, Simon maybe with a bit of an advantage because he started out a little bit later um, on so some of this pace, but he is now stretching away. I mean, he's pulled a massive gap now over Finley Whitelock. Um, so Simon looking in a uh, pretty decent position. Um, certainly over, uh, over an eight minute run. Um, his time's sort of getting quicker and quicker. Um, he's on a, a 42.801 at the moment as a predicted time. So what does it take? Obviously, Simon and uh, Stefan Schultz as well. They're both pretty accomplished, uh, very fast touring car and fronty racers. Um, well, I know Stefan is. I'm not sure about Simon for fronty. Yes, but I mean, well. Wh what does it take to go from touring car to trying... 12 scale what, what what's the differences that that someone might encounter um i uh, it, it's a difficult one i think if you're if you if you're fast you're fast it's more the technical knowledge the understanding of being able to put down a good car um that comes with with time and experience of a of a class um i think simon's uh, sort of, he, he's had quite a lot of support from. Yeah, he, uh, well, he's the, sat the next to a world champion for one thing. <laughs> he, he, he sat next to a couple of world champions. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's got Mark on one side and Max on the other, probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, co kind of. Um, so yeah, he he's got um, a lot of support and had quite a lot of assistance from um, the the rest of the team um, in, in terms of of getting the car sort of built and sorted. So the actual driving part of it is a fairly minor part. Um, there's other stuff. Um, well, it's, I mean, there's there's no, you know, things to get used to, I suppose, is what I'm looking for. Like, uh, there's no braking, really. There, yeah, there, there's there's not really any, any braking because to do. The, the, the spool on these is on the rear end, and, and in four-wheel drive touring car, the spool's on the front end. <laughs> so yes. You, you can brake as hard as you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you tend not to break anyway too much with yeah. 112th, um, just to, again, maintain the, the, the corner speed. Um, other than that, the other thing that might be playing to his advantage is probably keeping it quite simple. Um, he'll have turned up with one type of tyre, um, just to know sort of what he's doing, really. He, he's not having to experiment or anything like that. Um, that's kind of being left to, to other people. Um, yeah, that's true. He, you just go like, "Hey, Mark, what what are you running?" <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, and <laughs> always helps. Yeah, he he knows uh, e exactly what to do. Um, just just throws it down there, um, and and drives it. Um, but um, oh, yeah, we, okay, that's his run finished. It, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not a problem for him. It's just it's finished. Yeah, um, j just finished off the run um, and done a, a forty-two lap run over over eight minutes. Uh, so pr pretty quick um, and a, a 32.7 so let's see what the top heat does um, that's just coming up now so let's see what, uh, what what they manage yeah 
Yeah, we do have a question in the chat. You can uh, feel free to uh, pop a question in the chat. So uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, MD. I'm not sure if that's a Chinese character or, an, or a <laughs> wingding emoji or whatever, uh, but asking Team X-Ray. So I'm not asking, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're asking if Simon, who we were talking about uh, for some time there is, is he on Team X-Ray? But <coughs> in case that was your question, he's not. He's running an Osimatics. Um, but if you're asking how is Team X-Ray doing or something like that, well, Hagberg is, I think he finished second or top three in the in the first round. Yeah, and uh, of course, Over Jan, three laps. Jan Rothyski Jan also looking very Rathyski, quick. Rothyski is very quick uh, um, and running two classes as well. So it's quite interesting there. He is. So, um, yep, Jan um, soon be out on track. Um, so we're going to have uh, Ollie Payne, Lewis Parker, Jan Rathyski, Christian Donath, Morgan Williams, Max Mackler, Mark Stiles, and Michael Bolt. So uh, very uh, sort of um, British and German, this, <laughs> uh, th this heat. Is this uh, pretty much, is it half uh, Osmanics, half X-Ray roughly, that, uh, that, that lineup? No, there's, uh, what have we got? We've got two, two Schumacher. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, three Schumacher. We've got four automatics and an X-ray. Okay. So uh, in, uh, in in this heat. Of course, Schumacher is uh, one of our sponsors, so thank you very much to them and the rest of our sponsors for, uh, for providing this coverage to you guys. So cars heading off. Managing to negotiate their way out. And uh, that's a good bit of parking from uh, Lewis Parker. Wow. Coming out yes. onto the main straight. He uh, managed <laughs> to... Off the track and on the barrier, or uh, like hoarding. Down the side of the barrier. So we're <laughs> running with the car of Ollie Payne at the moment. Let's stick with him for a couple of laps. Uh, again, Ollie looking supremely fast over three laps. Um, maybe a bit more of a, a struggle uh, towards the eight-minute mark. Remember, we had... Uh, Simon Lauter did a, like a 42 in two. Uh, Ollie currently predicting a, a 44 in 10, but uh, let's see what that actually turns itself into um, by the, the end of the run. Um, now, Orlowski isn't uh, actually defending his uh, spec, world, uh, spec Euros title, is he? He isn't, no. Um, he is focusing just on uh, modified um, for this weekend. Um, obviously, he won the title um, a couple of years ago. Um, lost it last year to Alex Hagberg. Won the mod uh, title. He won the mod title, yep. yes, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, lost that to Alex Hagberg last year. Uh, so Alex looking to defend his title, um, start that run of, uh, of titles going again. Um, you know, had, uh, had seven in a row previously. Uh, so always there, always consistent, always brings home the results. Um, Ollie uh, starting to get a little bit squirrely um, coming out onto the straight. Morgan Williams up into second. Mark Stiles now third over three laps. So 32-7 uh, for Ollie. That's very, very slightly quicker than Simon Lauter was, but that's uh, the, the only driver uh, sub. Um, well, in fact, Lewis Parker's just gone 33-1, but um, Ollie, the only driver going in, in this heat, going anywhere near the pace of Simon and pretty much matching Simon's pace. They've just passed Max Mackler. Let's move back a car, actually, and watch Max. Uh, Max, the world champion, of course, won the title in Florida. So Max uh, made the B final last year at the Euros. We'll be looking to do uh, a little bit better this year, see what he can manage. Um, having uh, a few difficulties uh, earlier on, uh, was Max with um, sort of issues with breaking wheels more than anything, um, but uh, Max doing uh, pretty nicely out there. So somewhere in the mix, are we are we expecting the um, the groove? I suppose uh, it's, w will there a groove? What well, will a groove appear? Where the where any? I mean, there's rubber or traction compound or anything like that it, uh, it'll be cleaner on the racing line uh yes it will go down and a, a yeah um a, a line will build um and you'll, you'll have traction this wasn't a fresh carpet for this weekend so there'll be patches on the circuit where there is 
grip there is traction. Let's pick up the car of Lewis Parker running in second position. He is the yellow front, white center, pink rear. Uh, he's just heading around now. We've got him on screen. There we go as we come out onto the main straight. So let's have a look at uh, Lewis's car. Currently doing pretty much what he needs to. Uh, Lewis, his best lap, a 10.961. Uh, so, again, not really approaching the pace of, uh, of Simon from earlier. Uh, Jan Rathajski, has got just gone sub-11. He's got a 10.98. Morgan Williams, 10.981. Mark Stiles, 11.049. Uh, in fact, Christian Donath now uh, has just jumped up. Uh, with a 10.947. So let's see if we can find Jan out there. He is one of the all white colored cars. Just coming out onto the main straight now. He's the last of the two white cars. There we go, on the main straight. So he's closing in on the back of, looks like, Morgan Williams. Morgan jumps out of his way quite nicely. So we're pretty much at the five-minute mark. Uh, three minutes of the run remaining. So this is the point where we're starting to, expecting to start seeing people uh, dropping off. Ollie's still predicting a 44... Uh, 807. So quite a way down the road from next person who would be Jan Rathajski with a 43, 80, pretty much an 805. So that's going to be, Ollie's going to be you know, at this pace. Uh, if he can keep this up for eight minutes, he'll be laughing because that will be the best part of a lap down the road. Ollie's car actually one car back. Let's see if we've uh, got him, the white and red colored car. Let's pick him up as we go down the main straight. So with two minutes left. Ollie Payne, 32.695 now. So the only driver gone sub 32.7 over three laps. Looks like he's starting to have the rear of the car hooked up a bit further into the run. And these are sorts of incremental improvements that we'll be seeing on 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 most of the most of the drivers' cars. As, I think so. The, yes. Um, especially as the qualifying goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Ollie would, he'd probably rather not have Jan quite so close to him. <laughs> uh, just in case the rear lets go. You, you kind of, you can kind of tell watching the, the body language of the car. It just looks a little bit tight. Now that he's, Jan's let him through and just, he's not streaking away from him. Um, Ollie looks like he's just tightened up a little bit and he's just a little bit wary of. Um, he's got of, another of, car in front as well. Yeah, that's uh, Michael Bolt that the, the pair of them are, are catching. Um, just have a look. What have we got? We're into the final minute now. Um, and you can see uh, coming out onto the straight there, the extra drive forward that Ollie has, that's not horsepower. That's just having goes. that little bit of extra traction and, and drive forwards. But um, yeah, really good run coming together from... Ollie here. Just catching up Lewis Parker, who is the uh, second place driver. So uh, what do we have? 44 in uh, very slight drop-off in pace at the end there, but a 44-lap run from Ollie 
uh, 44.809. Uh, next up would have been Jan Rathyski with a 43.806. So Oli is, uh, what is he? Uh, he's like seven seconds down the road. So uh, it's a good run there from Oli. Uh, it's looking quite promising. So that is the end of the seeding practice for stock. Going to have a couple of heats of the LC racing class. Let's just have a uh, bit of a, a refresh of what the practice order looks like. So uh, quickest, we've got Ollie Payne from Simon Lauter from the previous heat, Lewis Parker, uh, Finley Whitelock from the um, previous heat as well, Jan Rathyski, Morgan Williams, Christian Donath, Mark Stiles, Max Mackler, Stefan Schultz, Andreas Brin. Some, uh, some good results from a bunch of guys there. So uh, looking pretty decent. Just watching these LC racing cars out on circuit. Alex Watts saying Simon's Automatics looks really fast. Yep, absolutely. Uh, car looking really good. I um, think there'll be a, a few more of the more experienced 112 drivers probably uh, having a, a good look over his car in the pits and uh, trying to establish quite what's different about it. Um, why it's quite that fast. This the LC Racing class. Got a couple of heats of that running. So a support class for the EFRA European Championships held here at Messina. So James, what do we think the drivers have uh, have? Uh, changed and improved and learned on their cars to uh to go quicker that in that second control practice round um i think mainly they're they, they haven't made a, a step change there they'll be familiar with the track now because they've driven that sort of um, many many times they're just getting used to um how to drive it to to look after the rear tires they'll be the, the traction will be building, um, so they'll have made it better. They'll be, you know, dis discussing with other people running the same car, um, what they're doing, what they're changing. Um, uh, basically, it's you know, it, it's a big thing, sort of working as part of a, a, a team and everybody putting information into into the melting pot. It's not always. Sometimes a bit of information can. It, it's, it's that last bit of a puzzle sometimes, even if something that someone does something wrong, it can be the thing that makes you, you put that last piece of the puzzle in and go, oh, look, it's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a thousand piece uh, uh, puzzle of the Grand Canyon. Yes. Oh, uh, we, and we've and only just now realized that, but by when we put in the last piece. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, sometimes it can be that, that one bit that looks like nothing, that looks like <laughs> just a, a piece of blue sky mm. or something that, that just completes the picture. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just makes it look like you, it, it kind of it gives the, the whole picture and <laughs> something will suddenly make sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the advantage of having, uh, you know, when you... Uh, you know, when, when you're buying... A, when you're looking for a racing car or a new racing class to to join like you know say you move to a new area and the the local club only runs uh a, a class that you're not familiar with you you probably are best off 
buying, well, one, a brand that you can know you can get spares for, but a brand that other people run. So you have a, a setup to kind of borrow from, or at least as a starting point. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it's, that's, uh, you yeah. know, the, at, at the sharp, at the other end of that, at the sharp end, uh, is an event like this where you have, you can go, hey, you know, Alex uh, Hagberg, uh, you know, I run an X-Ray um what what kind of what kind of settings you know do, do you suggest i try if this is happening or if you go to max or mark for automatics and you you say well i see you're running a completely different car from mine now <laughs> but anyway <laughs> uh, well <laughs> you know what i mean um, yeah, <laughs> or, or 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 schumacher who's uh, again one of our uh, event sponsors thank you very much uh <laughs> schumacher racing uh you can go to what, you, Murray, you think they'll so. be going to automatics and asking for, for setup? But well, no, no, that, no. I mean, no. That, well, that no, I mean, might if be. You, a, if you uh, have a Schumacher, I mean, uh, if you uh, have uh, a Schumacher, I, I, I couldn't possibly <laughs> comment on what front end parts they may be running on <laughs> on, on their car. But um, <laughs> let's, um, yeah, let, let's leave that at uh, let, let's leave it at, at, at yeah. that one. But um, but no, I mean, you know, like we we're saying, you know, talk about the the pool of knowledge that's available. You can uh, obviously there's there's uh, the three teams that are represented here. Pretty much, because um, sort of in the back of my mind, because obviously, because Dave, David Spachet from Zen Racing, yes. he used to run Trinity way back then. But at that time, it was basically it was Trinity and Associated, and then like variations of Associated, wasn't it? So it was uh, with uh, Yokomo and I think Kawada and you know yes. like these all these other smaller brands. Yeah, so I mean, there's a few obviously um, that David is been very heavily involved in the the destiny car uh there's a few of those yeah there's a, um, yeah, there's um, a few at, of those shirts around um out, out there that's um you know really strong car he also um brings in the the roche car um there's a few of those uh, kicking around in the in the pits as well but yeah i think predominantly um you, you see in sort of schumacher automatics x-ray um are the three sort of main um, cars, they're all quite different in terms of their their concept uh, as well. Yeah, um, th I mean that's that's kind of the really uh, I suppose where I was kind of leading things, but <laughs> they're, they're they're so different. They're so different to cars. I mean, obviously, you know, twenty years ago is twenty years ago, but anything will change. But the at the at the, the really sharp end of RC car development is just insane. Like they've gone, you know. Obviously, there's the, the the power supplies like the batteries, are are all different now, and you don't have uh, individual cells like we were talking about earlier. You have a one S battery, which has been around for a while, I suppose, like close to 10, 15 years. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, really, it was like 20, uh, 2011, 2012. Yeah, started. And, that, and that led to the demise of the T plate, basically, and pretty much the, the, yes. the rise of the link. Uh, suspend well the linked rear pod. Yeah, although actually the automatics it kind of works in the same way as a, a, a T bar car. Um, it's more like a, a U oh, rather yes. than a T. It's it's inverted, yeah. but it's uh, at, in terms of how it works, um, it, it is more like a, um, a a T bar or a, um, a, a T plate car that um, you you would normally uh, recognise as as that style of car. Um, the the X-ray is probably the most um, conventional um, yeah. in terms of a, a, a 12th scale car. And if, if you asked someone, yeah, a, 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 an experienced racer from you know 10, 15 years ago, yeah, what I was a, just to thinking draw a 12th that, yeah. scale, um, then the, the X-ray would be probably what they, you know, yeah. the nearest kind of thing to what to what they come up with. Um, and then you've got the um, the, the Schumacher sort of somewhere in between the two mm. um, and, and everything's got its own t strengths and, and weaknesses really um, you know the, the automatics has an inline battery layout compared to a transverse battery uh, maybe right, not so good yeah. in low grip um, you haven't got weight to transfer around um, but then as the grip comes up and the grip builds it just gets better and better and better um, carries more corner speeds it's flatter right, yeah. So Lower polar moment of inertia. Indeed. <laughs> um, so I know the term. I wouldn't be able to define it. Oh, well, it's basically like... Well, I think you just have to find it. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, like, uh, the, the, the classic example is the ballerina 
spinning faster as as or, or no the ice skater yes ice dancer is spinning faster as they as they bring their arms in um yes i hope they're not spinning that fast <laughs> no, if, if they're, um, <laughs> or the car the, the car would be just an absolute handful to drive if but, it was spinning uh, that spinning around that fast but uh yes it does change direction quicker in the yeah. um typically in, in chicanes and um so sort of second change of direction and that's something we saw uh, I think you know super, super high grip at the uh, at the world um, in, in Florida. Um, then the that sort of inline chassis layout uh, confers uh, confer an advantage. Do you um, expect the grip levels here to get that high, or are the racers expect? Uh, I don't like that? think they'll get that high. No, not with the kind of tires that are in use. Um, with a, an open tire, the world's was a, a control tire, um, and it was a, like a natural rubber tire. Um, oh, okay. Whereas these are kind of more like a synthetic foam. Those were JP, J Japan uh, foam something? No, at the Worlds they were... Um, they were oh, I'm thinking of the 2022 the, Worlds, I think. They, or, yeah. The 2020 Worlds, they were JFT. Yeah. Yes. Um, they were the, a similar kind of compound. They were effectively pink and magenta, but these were the Jayco, uh, J Jayco pink rear, Jayco magenta front. Right, so okay. 30 shore rear, 32 shore front. Um, which was very much what we had at the 2020 Worlds in Milton Keynes. Um, yeah, different wheel, but uh, same same kind of foam. And yeah, that natural uh, foam, it does lay down um, an awful lot of traction, and you end up with like a, a black line coming up and appearing right, on the track. Right, okay. Uh, it's just not something... Th this kind of tyre, th this sort of series of, of tyre, so... Uh, it will be like mainly contact T foam. It will be Ulti XM that people are running. Um, I would imagine the um, uh, like hag the hot race red dot. Um, you'd be seeing the mod red gums dot. red dot. Red dot, right? Red, red dot. <laughs> um, I know there's some random brand names out there. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that that you'd run um, the. Mob gums, I, I think that they'll probably be on like the, the silver stroke platinum uh, that they call it. Um, that would be the the kind of type of tire that you'd use, and it's a it, it, it's a bit of a strange thing. It they kind of smother the car in grip. Almost you you can't feel as much what the car is doing. It, it doesn't move around underneath you. You don't get the kind of feedback from it of what the car's doing um, to the same to the same sort of level um, but that's kind of what you'd um, be, be looking at um, where you'd, you'd end up with um, out on the track but uh, looking at who is quick at the moment Mikhail Milanovic um, still fairly good wasn't expecting to race this weekend just rocked up and uh, got given got given a car to race uh, here as uh, tech support for hobby wing along with uh, sultan hobby wing of course one of our event sponsors as you can see on the bottom of the screen there so thank you again to hobby wing um, of course uh, just as a reminder while we're on this little break you are watching uh, the efra one twelfth scale electric pan car European Championships uh, live from Messina in uh, well the northeast corner of uh, Sicily in Italy and uh, brought to you by Tony Sport our title sponsor all other sponsors are Schumacher Racing Tires Lens Bodies uh, Nicola, Nicola Maroni are here there's a large Schumacher team here of course Zen Racing as we were saying there are uh, uh, several drivers here sponsored uh, or supported by Zen and RCXX Shop. Also, Montec is one of our sponsors. And as we said, Sultan and Mikau, who is out actually out on track right now uh, from Hobby Wing. Um, they are all our event sponsors, so be sure and uh, check them out. And if you do talk with them on uh, social media, let them know that RC Racing TV sent you. Yeah, absolutely. Just... Um <coughs> Hoping to have a little chat with one or more of these sponsors. We've got uh, Andy from Schumacher, possibly, if he's uh, uh, not too busy. Uh, Nicola from Lens Bodies and uh, either Sultan or Macau from uh, Hobby Wing. Um, 
they're all here physically, but uh, whether they have the time between helping all their uh, various drivers, um, I'm sure, uh, I, I do wonder if uh, Nicola is going to be changing any tires for uh, Hagberg during his <laughs> his mod run. Well, I mean, Nicola's out next, um, <laughs> and Alex was, w uh, last time that round, Alex was, was changing tires for yeah. him. Well, so and, and in the open practice as well, the, the s at least the second run. So uh, Tony Reinhardt saying Mark can talk for us. Um, I'm not sure Mark wants to talk to anybody at the moment, Tony. But um, yeah. no, Mark is um, no, but Mark is um, he's he started the pace is starting to come together. It's starting to build for Mark. Um, so I, I'm yeah. sure we'll be featuring him on on uh, on the uh, following him, uh, you know, more and more as as the weekend goes on as well. Yeah. The um, for any sort of regular Mark Mark Reinhard followers, the chicken wings not quite in attendance yet, but <laughs> it's, it's starting to lift. The arms yeah. starting to lift, <laughs> uh, just a, just a little bit. So uh, yeah, it's um, it, it, it's coming. It, it's building. Mark's uh, Mark's getting faster. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we know you're we know you're kidding, Tony. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, and, and once again, in all seriousness, actually, you know, thank you very much for being uh, our title sponsor for the weekend. So uh, here all three days live. Uh, today was uh, we were expecting to be on air initially uh, from 8 a.m. for the start of free practice. But uh, we thought we'd uh, just finalize and fine tune some things, uh, fettle and niggle and all that stuff, uh, all those fun British words. Um, but uh, so finangle, but finangle. <laughs> Uh, but we'll uh, our actually our coverage starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow and finishes about I think it's either 7 or 8 I think it's 7 p.m. tomorrow uh, and then the same roughly the same amount of time uh, Sunday I think um, maybe slightly later on Sunday we won't cover the practice finals and then we'll, we'll do the the mains yeah um, j just yeah you know, to um, to give everybody a, a decent run um, throughout the day and a, a, a decent run of um, of, of coverage, um, we can make sure that that everything's all in position. But uh, just coming towards the end of uh, the practice session um, and the the last uh, group running or the last class running, uh, so we've got the this the modified class. Uh, which is uh, six and a half turn blinky. So I think we have four heats of these. Three heats of these. Three. Okay. Three heats of these. So. Uh, ah, Bossa has popped into the chat. So thank you very much, Bossa, Mister. Uh, well, Alex Hagberg's Ag dad. Alex Hagberg's dad. <laughs> yeah, he was sat in front of me uh, for most of the ETS weekend a few weeks back. Just uh, just watching everybody's car. Just waiting for everybody to be released onto the circuit. Yeah, it looks like we actually have some uh, good number of marshals out here. I had a, a quiet word with Chris about the lack of marshals in the, the first control practice run. So now we have, uh, it looks like they split up uh, the drivers from the, from the first race of the LC class. Yes. They've, they've moved some of them to... Yeah, because otherwise Cover we would have had like you know seven or eight drivers <laughs> marshalling two or three. Yeah, it uh, would have been uh, would have been fairly tight. So Alessandro Brunelli, Marcus Andreasen, Nicola Maroni, Alexander Anderson, Lucas Larson, Marco Maguni, Alessandro Bianchi, Marco Mazzini, and Marcello Galli are drivers for this one. It's just a warm up. Run, there's our, there's, well, there's all the names and countries for you. Indeed. A few, uh, uh, well, Italians and Swedes. Swedes and <laughs> Italians. So, uh, Sweden always a, a big supporter of the uh, 112 Euros. Yeah, they um, must get loads of 12 scale racing <laughs> in the winter. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, it's, it's always quite funny, you know, to see the, the, the countries, um, <coughs> That, that support it. We've got uh, yeah, a lot of Germans, a um, lot of lot of Brits um, here. So uh, strong teams from um, a, a lot of the 
northern European uh, countries, I think. The, the colder and wetter countries. Yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Where if, if we want to race, it's uh, it, it's indoors, so we, we don't get wet. <laughs> So boss is saying, I miss you all. Well, showing us, showing us the love. Yes. Thank you very much. So I'm sure we'll be featuring uh, Alex quite a bit again, uh, just like Mark, uh, quite a bit more as, as the weekend rolls on. Yeah, um, Alex um, expected to see him uh, somewhere in the mix um, over the course of the weekend. Um, did much the same at the Worlds, really. He was kind of quite quiet all weekend and popped up on the podium um, <laughs> at, at the end of it. It was, uh, <laughs> well, he did, I mean, didn't really register on anybody's he's radar. He's generally and pretty quiet anyway. He you know? is, yes. He's, he's, he's not very fairly shouty. Quiet. <laughs> Although having said that, he, he's lurking under the roster and yes, looking I, up. Yes, I see a pair of tires in his hand. So uh, kind of expecting to see uh, maybe uh, Nicola's car. Let's uh, have a look at Nicola's car, the all white colored car on the main straight now. Um, no, in fact, it's the second of the two white cars. But uh, let's yep. move back. There we go. Alex is very s studiously watching it. See, it's uh, probably. Do you think he's more analytical in his uh, data gathering than you are, James? Uh, I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> up, up, for, uh, up for debate. I've been uh, been, been having a, a debrief with um, with a, a few of the guys in the the automatics Ooh. pits and, a and slide, uh, just. Trying to um, impart uh, impart what you can see and, and yeah. what you can what, what you can gather. I will say Alex can do the driving part of this better than I can. <laughs> um, that's um, <laughs> that's pretty much a given. Um, again, the uh, number of people I, I used to be able to run with, used to be able to beat, um, is is getting the the list has turned into a scroll. <laughs> it's. Um, it's uh, it's it's long and distinguished. But, uh, there we go. We got a tire change happening there we again. Go. So now it's pretty involved. It, it, he's do that's the front. So there's a the what, a nut or is it a screw? Uh, it's a nut um, on the X-ray car. Um, and then there's three screws each on the back. Yeah, tire? I mean, look, looking at that, he's he's just changing the front wheel. So you have bearings okay. pressed into front wheels, but yeah. he's obviously had already had the bearings yeah. pressed into them. <laughs> oh, he um, is doing the back as well. He is doing the rear. So uh, having done the the front swap, so yep, three screws each side on the rear. Um, hands oh. uh, a bit of a blur. The marshal, marshal, the marshal needs to pay attention. You got a car stuck in front of you there. Sorry, you can't see that on screen. I'm just like shouting at uh, nothing, but old man shouting at clouds. So but, uh, uh, old man yells at cloud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, the car's dead anyway. So lucky, luckily for that young chap there. That was uh, anyway. car seven, Marcello Galli. So uh, one more tire, Alex. No pressure. No one's watching. <laughs> uh, live stream uh, may, of, uh, of a tire change. May I suggest a Hitachi uh, cordless uh, screwdriver? Uh, <laughs> other time. brands are available. <laughs> um, I, I believe actually they're branded Hikoki now. Really? Yes. What? I, I, I believe. I'm going to keep it old school and not sell my Hitachi and buy a Hikoki. Um, also notice actually uh -huh. uh, on on the bottom of the car there, whilst Alex has got up, got up on its side, um, Teflon tape. Ah. Um, if you're wondering sort of what that slight light coloured section is, that's a um, bit of a, a tactic that's come from the, the States to if the car touches down on the carpet, it just helps to stop it dragging. Yeah. It's like low friction. I suppose it helps with the, if, if it is, the, the track is extremely bumpy, uh, you, you just slide over it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, a bit like chassis, uh, chassis tape on the bottom of 10th buggies and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Simone saying, uh, "Chew me tires." Uh, yep, a bit of a tire change going on for Nicola. So Alex having sent him out. Let's uh, just watch his car and see what it looks like on fresh tires. Uh, now, do you think he would use actually use fresh tires, or would he have used uh, maybe a different compound? Or there'll be a different compound. They won't just be changing tires for the sake of yeah, it. It'll yeah. be a, um, a, a different compound. It's kind of a way to. Um, it, it's, it's a valid way to get an extra, yeah, you know, some extra information. Um, if there's not a, a huge number of, of people on 
that kind of tyre that you're on. Um, but I uh, wonder how many racers are using the, uh, the Nicola's uh, hot race brand. Well, they may not be, what is glued onto the wheel might not be what is you know, commercially available. They might be new prototypes under development. Uh, one of the things about this, this class is um, it, it's quite difficult to um, have consistent traction levels to develop stuff all the time. Sometimes you, you just need uh, like more and more traction um, to actually feel sort of what the car's doing. But um, let's see who is looking quick out there. The six car of Marcus Andreas. And let's see if we can spot the six car. Uh, spotted everything but the six. Let's pick up the five. That's the white and pink coloured car. That's uh, Alexander Anderson. He's on the main straight now. Off the end of the main straight. There we go. And uh, going completely sideways. So commentators curse just as we, uh, as we managed to get hold of him. Nicola Maroney running second in the heat. We were running with him earlier as we went through some tyre changes. We've got just over one minute left. In fact, it looks like the reason we couldn't see the six car is because uh, he's actually not out there on track. Yeah, he's the all orange coloured car, so uh, we've got him. Let's pick him up as he comes down the main straight. Just under 30 seconds left of this run remaining. to put it on his roof coming onto the main straight. Super easy to do, a little bit too much kerb. So timing completed. Marcus Andreas and taking that one then. So welcome to you if you are just joining us here for our coverage on a Friday afternoon of the F 112th European Championships. This the penultimate heat of modified uh, control practice. So uh, a reseed after this one. Uh, our event coverage here on RC Racing TV brought to you in conjunction with Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing. Cars released out onto the circuit. Alessio Mazio looking pretty quick over, certainly over three laps. Kevin Hebert joining us as well. Hi Kevin, thank you very much for the compliment. We're glad uh, for all of our uh, chat uh, participants and for all of you watching. 
was just going to say, I'm going to, if, okay, I see where, see where Nicola is going to, to Marshall, see if I can get a, uh, a cheeky word to uh, see what they're trying to discern or accomplish with the, uh, the tire changes. So countdown uh, just going. You might wonder why you're seeing some heats um, stop at the line and some just sort of yeah, continue circling. Yeah, some stop circling. behind the line, some stop ahead of the line. And it, I, it doesn't does really matter for control practice no, because no. your time only starts when you cross the loop. So some people kind of, I think that the top guys have already got a, an eye on eight minutes and are kind of stacking themselves in the right place so they know where they are every time. Other guys that are just looking to get in three laps are just finding some space on the track and, and wanting to, to just get out there and, and do the time. Uh, and it, they don't really mind you know, where they are when the clock starts. Um, so that's why you're seeing two different things. Again, personally, I'd probably be loitering somewhere around the line and cross the loop uh, <laughs> at a about the right time, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it is a, an individual, um, an individual thing. Um, I, I've seen uh, Nicola, Nicola standing kind of on his own. He's uh, must have got someone else to marshal for him, or they have enough marshals out there. So I'm going to go see if I can uh, drag some information out of him. Okay, uh, let's see who is looking quick at the moment. Uh, car eight, Rene Yarn. Let's see if we can spot him. I think he is the minty green front, white rear car. Uh, that is uh, just pitched it sideways. He's out onto the main straight now. Let's just confirm that is the eight car. It is the eight car, I believe, of Rene Yarn. See, in off the end of the main straight, a little bit hesitant. Um, where are we? We've got like one and a half minutes into the run. Um, not wanting to take too much out of the rear tyres at this stage. Uh, certainly in this um, six and a half turn class, uh, rear tire life, um, a real struggle. Um, you can you can quite easily know about three laps at the start, but uh, your aim is to, to hang on to the tires uh, by the, the eight minute mark. So you, you don't want to lean on them too hard at this stage. Who else is looking fast? Uh, we've got Rosario Giamo. He is the all-white coloured car on the main straight now. Let's see if we can pick him up. He's got some sort of fluoro orange flicks on the inside of the uh, like wing end fences. Just have a look at him. Again, car pitching, diving around as he follows in. Uh, sort of off the end of the... The main straight negotiates his way past. I think that's Stu Cartwright that's just let him go. Car ducking and diving. Um, now the second place car, actually, because uh, Alessio Mazio has made his way to the front. Um, Alessio's local track. It's not his normal class. But um, Alessio with the number one car. Let's uh, just see if we can spot him. I think he's running his race paint. He is. It's the white front blue centre uh, orange rear. So this is uh, Alessio Mazio. Uh, good progress, very proficient nitro racer. Uh, local track here in Sicily. So just uh, Alessio discovering that this is a really nice winter class to uh, to race when it's too wet to race outdoors. Uh, really good place to, good way to keep your thumbs in, keep your thumbs active. Um, just get yourself uh, out there and racing. Uh, sort of closest thing to one eighth uh, on road racing that you're likely to find. So like three tenths faster over three laps compared to anyone else so far. Uh, 31.5 over three laps compared to a 31.8. It's looking good, looking pretty decent. Again, finds his way past some traffic. 
rear of the car now as we're just past the four minute mark starting to look a little bit loose he's looking a, a little bit hesitant to turn in to crank the back of the car in certainly off the end of the main straight it's looking a little bit squirrely let's have a look one more time you can see there a bit of over rotation just about manages to hang on to it but uh, that's going to be uh, uh, you'd, you'd want the car to be a bit more planted at this stage of the run um, if it's like that with 30 seconds to go you can kind of hang on to it um, but uh, four minutes in is uh, a little bit on the early side for, uh, for the rear of the car to be letting go like that Let's see who else is out on the track at the moment uh, Martin Huddy with the three car let's see if we can find uh, Martin he is the all-white coloured car. He's lapping in splendid solitude. Just about coming out onto the main straight now. So this is Martin Huddy's car. Again, that uh, discussion we were having earlier about the uh, sort of one of the more uh, conventional uh, cars on the market. But looking good, looking smooth. We'll have done a lot of laps at the uh, Huddy Arena. Will Martin just keeping that, keeping it circulating, keeping it smooth, keeping it sensible. It's looking nice. That looks like a good eight minute car. It's not too shabby over three laps. He's uh, gone sub 32. He's 31.971. Not quite as quick as, uh, as Alessio. But, uh, see a couple of retirements up on the driver's rostrum. Looks like uh, Christian Donath, Stu Cartwright, having both taken a bit of a step back. Let's see if we can find Alessio's car again, the number five car. White front, blue center, orange rear, just coming out of the main straight now. Let's have a look and see how his car contrasts. Uh, you can see it's now actually struggling for forward drive. Um, car looking really, really difficult to, to get on the throttle. Bit of over rotation on the exit of the corner there. Um, Alessio using his talents to hang on to it, though. It's, it's not going to be fast at this stage. This is just grit your teeth and, and hang on. That doesn't look pretty with uh, 45 seconds left. Again, you might get away with that in qualifying. Um, in a final, you really don't want a car quite as loose as that. So 20 seconds remaining. Alessio just hanging on to his car as best he can. Tries to tie itself in knots coming onto the main straight. Just brings it in. That's the penultimate heat of the modified class done. So uh, last round of, uh, last heat of practice coming up. Uh, we'll then have um, a bit of a break. Uh, we're going to be off air for a um, little bit of time whilst the resort takes place. Uh, and we'll have an opening ceremony going on as well. Cars being placed down on the circuit. Who are we going to have out here? It's like a, a veritable who's who of 1 to world scale. Oli Payne, Alex Hagberg, Michal Lowski, Jan Rathaisky, Mark Reinhardt, Marcus Mobers, Rene Doctor, and Lewis Parker. But, 
um, something interesting going on. Just seen um, Michael Olowski's car going down with white wheels on it. So uh, suggests he's trying hot race. Um, so um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see see what the story is there. Ollie Quick is so far in stock and uh, and modified so far. So uh, let's see what he can do. As he started, he is the white and red coloured car. See if we can pick him up. He's just coming out onto the main straight now. He's chasing Alex Hagberg by the looks of it. <laughs> 